One of the things that's a buzz on the internet right now is Drake and his involvement with uh, the sovereignty movement and with David Wilcox. So let's start the show by getting an update from Drake on what's happening with the international movement um, regarding the sovereignty, filing of papers, and all in the Hague. Drake, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Um, Well, basically, um, that um, portion of the effort that uh, was undertaken here in the States has been completed uh, as far as those who requested us to do so. So basically you're standing, if you're in the United States, in a free country. The um, people that uh, did that decided that they would uh, continue it to see whether or not we could offer uh, the same sovereignty and freedom to all 50 states. The um, recent developments um, that people have been looking for, uh, and this is a a, a continuing problem. I have to be extraordinarily careful about what I say, how it's stated, and exactly what... um, uh, information I give out so that it doesn't endanger anyone. That's uh, understandable, Drake, and we don't expect you to disclose anything that's going to endanger or cause any problems in the movement, but just a general overview, and particularly uh, the interest from other countries globally. Well, um, the interest uh, started growing uh, approximately um, two months ago. We started getting uh, individuals who were interested. There was also a combination of these uh, in terms of the countries, uh, the number of countries. Uh, Then within each country, uh, other people heard about what was going on. And so basically you've got approximately uh, 20 countries outside the United States who are interested in trying to uh, follow the protocols that we used in terms of the general uh, procedures. Uh, This involves sovereign documents, uh, base documents for the existence of government, that sort of thing. Basically what it is is a declaration um, to the world uh, of the sovereignty of an individual state. Now, Everybody understands what a state is. Um, the individual states within the United States are uh, becoming sovereign entities as their own countries in terms of the notification process. What this does when you have a majority of the number of states, it gives the country as a whole its freedom if everyone wishes to go along with the idea. uh, there's been a great amount of interest in Europe, uh, South America, um, and other places. Uh, We've had had one um, really nice conference call I'm hoping to uh, follow up with uh, as they're ready uh, with Canada. Canada is looking to um, attain the same type of uh, sovereignty as we have. Uh, attain and basically what it does is it comes through as uh, first a notification but the notification itself um, involves a meeting of individuals and within the minutes of the meeting are declarations made of disengagement with uh, present government if that's the intent and purpose of the meeting and the uh, Follow-up to that is a combination of uh, legal requirements so that you can use uh, local um, uh, notaries uh, on an international basis, and the that grouping of papers or paperwork, documents as it might be, uh, goes then to uh, a certain uh, division of the Hague or the International Court as a notification. Now, a lot of people don't understand about notifications. And notifications or declarations um, 
easy, easy, the easiest way to do that, to explain that, would be to look at the uh, Declaration of Independence, where a government becomes uh, too suppressive or overbearing for the people to stand having it uh, in place any longer, uh, they replace it. Um, you can rewrite any of the documentation that you feel is necessary or use original documentation, as we have done, in order to give it a basis. Um, so right now we've got about 20 countries, and I'm going to be doing interviews in um, several of them in the near future in order to um, see exactly how uh, things can be uh, moved forward in their own countries. Now the problem with that is that I live in the United States, I'm familiar with our paperwork and our, our founding documents, and Canada's um, differential is that there are still ties in terms of the original paperwork to the crown. So you've got uh, considerations that are different, and each and every country in that light or understanding is different in that way. The sovereignty and freedom is not. Now, we base, we're base we basing our premise after uh, we um, disen uh, have full disengagement with the government um, on common law. We feel that to be the um, best way to go because the uh, there's two, two factions of common law, uh, natural law or nature's law, the... Um, I don't know what you'd call it, the righteous law, as it used to be referred to, in combination with the legalistics found in what people are familiar with from uh, Great Britain as common law. When you combine the two, you come out with something that's simple to understand and easy to implement and is fair to everybody. And that's something everybody's been looking for. So what we're looking at is uh, spreading the word, spreading that freedom. Um, the... Our military is uh, involved in this with us. Uh, they are principal in some of, some of the areas of our activities. They are not principal in others. I'm working with some of the people that uh, operate on an international basis. Um, these people are uh, basically those who can uh, cause the uh, central banking system to uh, act correctly. By oh, a question, Drake. A question on this. With the filing in the Hague and all, um, isn't this forewarning them about what's what you have in mind? And wouldn't this give them? And aren't they the controllers to begin with? The central controllers. And would not that be giving them a heads up on what you're doing, and possibly give them time to intervene and sabotage? Uh, no, not exactly, and the reason for that is that this is the the whole of what's going on are a group are small groups of individuals in individual states. Nobody knows who everybody is. There is no group as such, even other than the small groups, five or more in each state, uh, who know each other uh, real well. Uh, there's no organization other than the paperwork itself, and there's no leader, so it's real. It becomes real difficult to attack anything. Uh, the problem with the heads up is twofold. I don't know if everybody is uh, aware of datings, but uh, back in um, February of this year, there was an extraordinary bunch of uh, resignations, arrests, and uh, other things going on in Europe. That started the same day that our paperwork left our shores. So the uh, gist of this is that they knew the importance of it. They tried to catch it, but they missed. They also tried to catch it at The Hague and missed that opportunity. We got our paperwork through. So what that did was that basically undo undoes all of the fraudulent financial uh, systems on the planet. Now, there's a, a whole lot that goes into that. Um, there is also some principles that I work with who are internationally um, known. Uh, people know of David Wilcock and they know uh, Brian 
or uh, Benjamin Fulford. But the people that they may not know yet, uh, the other friends of mine involved in this, have already uh, filed paperwork here in the states that put a lien against the central or federal banking system, all 12 of them. Now, what this does is it uh, actually, as a lien, attaches their charter, meaning that they can no longer do business until they settle the lien. The liens have to do with what's called world accounts or collateral accounts. People have talked about this, uh, Benjamin Fulford and others. Now, Fulford is not altogether uh, everything he'd like to be. He has had some problems, but uh, he's also gotten some good information in the beginning. He had some slip-ups and some problems, um, and he's getting back on track. So he'll be back, I'm sure. Now, the people that I'm dealing with, are the ones who filed filed these liens. Uh, The lien states this. There is no, as such, collateral in terms of uh, intrinsic value held by the central banking system. Therefore, uh, they cannot do any of the, and most of, the financial things that they have been doing. The reason being is that their base finance comes from these collateral accounts, which they had no right to use. They have not been able to get a hold of, and by that I mean actually get to the assets of these accounts. What uh, they have done, and everybody's probably heard of this, it's called leasing gold or leveraging gold and this sort of thing. Um the assets are not entirely gold. I will make that clear. These assets are um, extraordinarily diverse. They're also not located um, exactly where some people think they are. Um, the Navy has been tasked to try to find some of the vaults where these monies are held. That's why you have a problem between China and the United States in terms of playing games with China's islands in the China Sea. Your liens against the banks, is that going to cause a bank holiday where they're going to shut down and we won't be able to get our monies out? Well, what it's going to do, there's, a, there's several things. in the, There's a plan that uh, this runs and comes from uh, that's been very well uh, kept from just about everybody. Um, What happens with the banks is this. Because the lien requires them to repay what they have stolen, uh, borrowed, leveraged, etc., they do not have the funds to do so. So basically what happens is that these banks and bank system, to include all of the Fed, uh, will go bankrupt. Now, the... Uh, period of time that you're talking about, you're saying banking holiday. The estimated period of time is three to five days before there is a revaluation. And I know everybody should be familiar with that uh, idea because of the um, thing with the dinar right now. The revaluation means that the uh, collateral accounts are designed to make sure that the individuals, the people, benefit from these accounts. Therefore, what you're going to have is go, is a system that goes from a debt instrument, which is what you have now, to an equity instrument. And that is, first of all, an extraordinary change. The other part about it is, is that um, due to several things, the uh, central banking system has also been limited, and this includes Europe. I'm not leaving them out. Um, the central banking system goes through Canada. Uh, it's located in South America. It's located in uh, Mexico and uh, most of the countries. These are the Rothschilds and uh, Rockefellers, uh, Bushes, and several other people that own these. This is a private concern. However, each in each and every case, the uh, central banking system controls the monies, meaning that they are allowed to print if that is allowed within the country they're within, and or 
the amount of currencies available to the small banks, which goes to business, and et cetera, to individuals. So what you've got is this takedown, and this is intended. You've got um, something that uh, was mentioned by Henry Ford that's out there. It's big. It's evil. And even the extreme, extreme and extraordinarily wealthy only whisper about it because they're afraid of it. This is the what I call the cabal. It is basically uh, designed in such a fashion as to squeeze every penny that it can out of every individual on the planet. It deals with the United Nations. It uh, deals with Agenda 21 and things of this nature. What the basis of what is being done is that as the finance goes, so goes the power of anyone. So when this thing is reduced at the point that it is uh, fully attached, then you're going to have a sweeping amount of arrests, both here, Europe. Um, they've already made some in some other foreign countries. And these sweeping arrests are going to take down anyone that was involved in the uh, unauthorized use uh, of these collateral accounts and the thefts involved. So you're going to have a dead zone, and that means that the money will be worthless for several days. My recommendation has been to expect uh, no capability financially for a period of a minimum of 72 hours that there may be interruptions in services of all, say, uh, trucks going to groceries, things of this nature, delivery of fuels, for a period of up to two, maybe three weeks. Now, according to the plan, this is the two to three weeks in interruptions is supposed to be the maximum. The other part of the plan is that they want this to be as uh, peaceful as calm, cool, quiet as possible. Now, it's going to be very public. There's going to be some people that are going to be screaming uh, <laughs> bloody murder because, uh, well, I'm I'm a mucky muck. You can't put me in handcuffs. And they're going to pack Mr. Fat Boy off to the paddy wagon, and away he goes. Now, here in the United States, these people actually built uh, what are called FEMA camps. Um it's been the decision of the military that uh, seeing as how they built such nice uh, places for us to go camping that we should put them in there. Uh, what they're going to do is hold these people, find out exactly what they can about them, and see exactly what it takes in terms of their level of involvement will determine their adjudication. In other words, they may end up um, staying in the FEMA camps the rest of their days. Who knows? But what the uh, primary part of this is, is that when you reduce the financial power, you can't pay the thugs, you can't pay other people to do your bidding, and there's only one of you. Now, I have uh, done several shows that address most of this. Uh, you can find those at freedomreigns.us. That's our website. There's recordings there. I've addressed the military, the troops, and... Uh, also, a lot of the militias and general people in different shows, as well as outings uh, such as this. Uh, I'm seeing in the chat room that people want to see documentation. Well, the documentation has been put on the Internet, and it is the liens against the central banking system if you want to have documentation. That right now is about as far as you'll get. The next thing to happen is a direct uh Front, uh, frontal assault against the um, uh, banking system individuals themselves along with a rather long laundry list of names that a lot of people know and don't suspect they're dirty. These are politicians who've taken uh, funds for favors, that sort of thing, whether it's a con campaign contribution or whatever, does not matter. So, the uh, the basis of it is that as these uh, problem people and problem institutions are removed, then you can have freedom. Now, I do not recommend this 
be attempted in any country where you cannot get the assistance of the military. There are, it's not, it's, it's almost impossible for any um, revolutionary type of action to be taken without those, um, without, without the assistance of those in the military. My concern with Patrick, my concern with the people in the military are they're being first number one, absolutely brainwashed so they can't think on their own. I've seen a lot of that. Uh, they are drugged up. They are basically broken down overseas so that when they come back here, there's no resistance any longer. The ones that are still in the forces, I've seen the videos on these psychos out there that are getting off on just shooting people. How many of those? What percentage are we dealing with in that factor? <laughs> okay. Uh, right now we've, we're dealing with about 80 to 90% of the standing military all the way through command. And the um, things that you're noting um, are being dealt with uh, more of a, on more of a private uh, sort of basis than a public or official basis. Um, I've been involved with uh, military disability for quite a few years now, and um, I'm a Vietnam veteran. And I know a lot of Iraqi and Afghanistan veterans who have had problems. There's two ways to address that. Uh, one is the psycho meds everybody's heard of. And some of those are not as bad, basically, as people think. Um, then you have what's called holistic or natural treatments for readjusting brain chemistries and repairing things that have been um, screwed up. Uh, be that the nervous system, be that the brain itself, uh, thought processes are simple. Most of um, <laughs> most of the uh, people who have a problem always gener generally gravitate towards um, areas where other veterans congregate. If uh, someone is a veteran, uh, I recommend that they go there. Two reasons. Number one, they have um, um, basic information. They've got it together to a point where they can actually go to a place, have a beer and relax. And the information that they can give is not as such advice as much as it, as it is a manner of being able to deal with the problems they were given by the military service. The, and these problems are addressable to an extent. Um, I no longer have a tendency to want to kill people, so I can tell you firsthand from personal experience that it works. So, you know. I'm more concerned with them being the 20% that actually are still loyal to what's going on and them getting control and in their mind that they believe that they, what they're doing is right. Yeah, they have that elitist outlook. I mean, basically, if you're referred to as a civilian in the military when you're uh, in active duty, that's a, a, a slander against you. I understand that, and I'm going to address that since I brought it up. Um, it's less than 20% in terms of the people who would actually forcibly stand against the other men in their groups. Now, um, there's a reason for my saying that, and that is because I've been working with a lot of veterans and veterans groups, active military as well, in order to make sure that they understand that they're not to engage civilians, for one thing. Number two, that if martial law were declared, and this is a given fact right now, 99% of uh, all of the standing military will take a walk or go AWOL. They will tell you to take it and stick it. They ain't doing that. The other part of this deals with the ideology of the crazy veteran. He's been to war. He's a nutcase. Well, yeah, there's a few of those out there, and some of those don't make it back. Now, the other part is um, that the people around those individuals either take care of that individual, he ends up in jail usually, 
or ends up in a padded room. Now, those who do not are not necessarily dysfunctional to the extent where they do not understand what is needed to be done. That's a big difference. The activity within the structure that's offered in terms of military is such that anyone who would like to be able to um, um, offer their services in a very uh, highly directed manner, I encourage to uh, get together with a combination of militias, preferably those who have ex or retired or even active duty military members, and learn from them. The, there's two parts to this. One is what I've already described. The second part is the ability to think and differentiate between what is and what is not to be done. These but the, mind, the mindset that we're against, Jake, though, is uh, we've got a, a transport route through central of uh, B.C. where they bring in uh, the soldiers for training from the other province next door. And in one of the... Uh, tourist info booths in there and the, it was made out of logs, a log uh, structure. Carved in the logs was big dog rules. Now my mind sees uh, a, uh, a young soldier taking a break in this pit stop here and uh, carving that in, that big dog rules. If you've been to YouTube and seen big dog, big dog is going to hunt you through the bushes and keep on coming at you till it gets you snuffed. I mean, and if that's the mindset of the military, the young ones that are being programmed with the games and all, it causes great concern. I understand that, and that's not uh, much more than a joke. And until you understand and have dealt in life and death situations and have had personal interaction on a long-term basis with someone who has, you will not understand that. Now, I don't mean something where uh, somebody is playing deathly games with you. I mean literal combat. There's a big, big difference between that and any other actions. Now, the differential is this. Um, there are uh, a number of what's called death tunes that people play because it's similar to the, the uh, Woodstock song, Whoopee, we're all going to die. Okay, well, what you do is you play death things, you play serious things in terms of jokes, in terms of musics that allow you to disengage your uh, personal self from part of what you're doing. And I'll tell you right now, it everything you've got is against you pulling the trigger. And yet you may have to do that anyway. This is what this is for. It allows you to, when needed, to do so. And that's different from being a mindless machine that just kills. It is a personal protection, but you're fully aware, fully cognizant, and fully understanding of what you're doing. You are taking a human life. And I don't care, <laughs> quite honestly, who says different. I still see a lot of the faces of the people that I shot personally. So, uh, yeah, it haunts you, and it's with you. People won't admit that it bothers them. Well, they are bothered, believe me. It is an extraordinary conscience uh, problem when you everything that you know to be good and true ends when you pull a trigger. It goes against all the good you've ever been taught and everything good that you've ever experienced. Sometimes you got a choice. Do I want that guy to shoot me or do I want to shoot him first? And that's the basic, simple decision. It's got a bunch of ramifications. And yes, there are mindless uh, idiots who want to act like uh, King Kong, but you'll find that anywhere. Uh, you get a group of guys together with no uh, girls to keep them tame, and you're going to find that sort of fun and games attitude. They'll be uh, wrestling and all these other um, fun, uh, all, all the all the silly things that little boys do. Big boys also do. So 
in that light, you have to understand two things. There is a difference, and that difference is that there is an understanding of the permanence. When you kill somebody, you take everything they've had or ever will have. It's done. It's permanent. And you get to live with that memory. That look, The last look that that person gives you that you give them. And was that really necessary? Probably not. Why'd you do it? Because he was going to do it to me if I didn't do it to him. It's not something that's nice, and I'm not justifying it. I disagree with the idea. I would like nothing better than to be able to put my guns down and never pick them up again. But I don't have that luxury. Because I've been putting information out, I've painted a target on me that's so big I had to buy a pickup truck to haul the sucker. i got to carry a gun into the outhouse with me. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like the idea of violence. But I'm also not somebody uh, who will necessarily hesitate when one of these people comes after me because I cost them some money in terms of what I'm doing, in terms of trying to set people free so they don't have to go through that crap that I've gone through. And that's basically the idea of the reason I'm willing to go through it. Nobody should have to experience this, period. There is no uh, reason, and their reason is money. They get rich off of it. They back both sides. Then each country, irrespective as to win or lose, gets to pay the bill. Our corporate government has gone into debt in the United States heavily. Well, the people didn't go into debt. The corporate government did. But guess who got to pay for lunch and is still buy, doing dishes because they don't got the money? That's where your joblessness, your hungry kids, and all this stuff comes into play. And you've got people like George Bush and others standing between you and a, and a decent job, standing between you and feeding your kids. And these people got to go. Well, the process of doing that, you have to take their financial um, strength away from them. Consequently, it's got to it's gotta go. Therefore, it's going to be broken. And it's going to stay that way long enough so that everybody that does, has had any part in this sort of thing gets to go visit a FEMA camp. They'll find out exactly what that person did, how much they did, and what they were responsible for. At that point, they'll be adjudicated according to those crimes. And I'm going to tell you, there are going to be a whole load of executions. You have no idea as to the number of children that are bought and sold by these uh, monsters. You have no idea what's done to those innocent children. Uh, and it goes on from there. Uh, the housing bubble was premeditated. The Great Depressions were premeditated. All of these things that are being done, the wars, premeditated. We went to uh, <laughs> we went to Iraq. Everybody says, oil. <laughs> Guess what? We went over there to see whether or not we could secure the machine that Saddam Hussein found in a pyramidic complex that is uh, advanced technology. And that's the only reason, because they can make money off of knowing what the future says. If you know which way the election can go, you can go ahead and bet on that and clean up. Thanks for that, Nick. That was the Babylonian ruins they were supposed to have gone in there to excavate. Is that the same information that you have? Yes. Those uh, cubics in the uh, desert in the uh, southwestern portion of uh, Iraq are exactly where they went. Now, there's also a landing field, an old ancient, uh, it's supposedly a UFO landing field. This is what the what it says in hieroglyphs on the on the stones that are around it. And... Saddam Hussein found a control unit that was able to predict where a craft would be so that it could bring it in on a homing beam. Uh, if you adjust that a little bit and combine it with two other machines that were there, you get something where you can see into the future. Now, it would be kind of nice to be able to know what's going to happen. Then to go along with this, you combine that with what's called Stargate technology, uh, which Saddam also dug up. And you can bring in Arabs or whoever you want from whatever period of time you feel like you want to bring them in. Foreign planets even. Don't matter. Uh, and this goes on and on. There's technologies that would literally um, blow everybody's mind that have been suppressed, hidden away. Oh, hey, I'm powerful if I got this thing. When they come to the door, I just flip the switch, 
They won't be there anymore. That's pretty cool. Um, people have heard of things. Well, part of the uh, sweep, the freedom, is going to be an expose of a fully translucent uh, government. And by that I mean all of this stuff is coming out. There are machines that can heal. There are machines that can reinitiate DNA. There are uh, chemicals that can do that. There's a pill you can take that uh, basically absolves you of uh, the limitation of 80 years. <laughs> I'm sure much of this could be done with the frequencies, and this is one of the reasons the government is like uh, men in black if you're transmitting any kind of frequencies or playing with them, same as Tesla did. It's been 100 right. years since Tesla. He could plant voices in people's heads. They've had a trillion dollars a year for 100 years. Um, I hope you've got an imagination, because if you can think of it, I'm sure that they do have it. Pretty much. That's, that's, it's, sort of, it's sort of like thinking about what uh, advanced Star Trek would be like in terms of a lifestyle. These things have been going on since, um, well, I found out that they go back all the way back to the 50s. So... I mean, you know, if you could teleport in the 50s, I can't imagine how much else they found since then. Um, you know, use your imagination. I know of um, healing machines where you actually walk through a doorway, and when you do, you get a little bit uh, queasy right at first, and then the queasiness goes away, and you are effectively, say, a 60-, 70-year-old person, you're all of a sudden about 35 again, physically, and you are also the same mentally. You function at that level and retain the knowledge you have gained. You also go from the 80-year, 90-year limit, whatever that might be today, into the six, seven, eight hundred year range, and bingo. That's an that's just one example. Um, People want to the miracle, the, I was going to say, Drake, the miracles that I've seen in the ancient texts are what will come back to us should we get rid of the interfering frequencies and get our bodies cleaned up. As you're saying, the 800-year lifespan, uh, if we could neutralize what's going on in the body, we all the ancient texts talk about that. And just uh, the other day, I seen a remarkable video on YouTube, Greg Braden, and what they had was they had an ultrasound picture of a tumor in a person and then uh, of the tumor itself. Then they had a live picture happening with the ultrasound as three Chinese doctors chanted and removed the tumor as you're watching the tumor move. And that was just a matter of using frequencies. So with the Tesla technology, anything is possible. Yeah. It's not limited. Um, they've had stargates they've used to go to different uh, planets for years. Just similar to what... Here, here's something everybody can look at and get and learn something about. You've heard of the, of the movie and you've heard of the series Stargate. That's fairly accurate, by the way. Uh, you've also heard of uh, Star Trek. That's also fairly accurate. You've also heard of um, other things where um, people might be different from us and yet um, at the same time similar enough that you can't necessarily see the difference. Um, you can go to, uh, there are several websites that I know of that actually have pictures of the and short movies of the interviews that the ETs did with, uh, um, well, let's see, what was his name? Um, Trying to think of the general's name that became president back in the 50s. I can't think of his name. Eisenhower. Oh, Eisenhower, yeah. Okay. They've got those posted on posted on, on the Internet, okay? And you got to know where to go get them. But uh, what we basically did, we screwed it up, which is not unusual for military minds or government <laughs> officials and politicians. Uh, we tried to tell E.T. how it was going to be, and they were trying to explain to us that uh, – uh, well, you know, we think you know we think it needs to be a little different, and we kept trying to dictate. And they said, "Okay, well, this interview is over." And because they had been disrespectful to the planetary ambassador, 
Uh, the general who controls deep space expressed the simple fact that if man showed up in deep space, he would make sure that they were blasted back to their origins. They're not going to put up with that sort of horse manure and childishness at that level, period. So there's a lot. Of, uh, the average people are going to have to grow up considerably. The average person is going to have to get their head wrapped around things. Now, we are to be advanced. <laughs> this is supposedly coming uh, from this basis of reality, which is supposedly about third level, give or take. And um, <laughs> we're supposed to advance uh, to the next level. Now, that advancement, as I understand it, is similar to going from Cro-Magnon or somebody that swings through the trees, whatever, to present day. That's the amount of advancement. So we think we are uh, pretty much top dog. Now, I want you to think about us being uh, a, qu a cave dweller <laughs> and going to the advancement we have today as the same difference between what we are now and what we are to be in the near future. Think about well, it that makes uh, the ancient cultures, uh, Atlantis and things of that nature, child's play. And you start getting the picture. Start seeing some of the visible signs. We were out the other night just a couple nights ago for the uh, meteor shower, and I spotted a couple bright lights in the sky. And we started watching, and there were three of us. We've seen two brightly lit craft. They were in outer space, and they darted towards each other, did 90-degree turns, danced around each other, and then took off. I didn't think, believe that to be alien uh, life forms because this was more like, uh, it would seem, military attitude of playing around with the toys that they have. What do you know about those things? Um, well, we've had um, um, interplanetary uh, capability for since uh, let's see 1956 uh, both with the Stargates and with uh, craft um, there's a, a website called uh, Veteran Today um, and they were espousing about this uh, far out fast craft well somebody didn't do their homework very well First of all, it only lasts a few seconds and only does 16,000 miles per hour. We have craft right now that uh, <coughs> get into the area of um, 25 to hmm, 40,000 miles per hour in the atmosphere with no heat and without any noise. That's the present. That's part of the present technology. If you use what's called um, a, a configuration of a coil similar to a degaussing coil, um, and everybody can look that up on the internet, uh, and you charge it with uh, a combination of extraordinarily high voltage at frequency, you get. Um, a reaction in the atmosphere that causes that thing to, as far as normal sight is concerned, to disappear. The cloak of invisibility. Supposedly, these things have been flying around. These were built originally, by the way, by the Nazis. Uh, I think everybody is familiar with hearing of the Bell technology. This is a this is called a pinging or ringing or um, uh, toning. Uh, in terms of a harmonic of light. And what it does is it simply turns the the uh, light at an angle that, uh, that encompasses whatever size craft you've got when you, have, when you use the proper frequency and the proper voltage. And whatever, however big it is, I mean, it can be well, big as a bus, and you can't see it. You'll walk right into it because you can see what it looks like. You can see through it. In other words, you'll see a tree stick out over the top of something. Well, you can see all the way to the ground and the ground beyond it. No problem. You don't think anything's there. It's kind of like walking into a piece of glass that's real clean that you didn't know existed. It was in your yard kind of thing. So 
this is just the, the technologies are extraordinary. Um, some of the, um, especially in, in in some of the frequency technologies, because when you get into harmonics, uh, the bass sciences that everybody's familiar with, <clears throat> dealing with electricity, as an example, the bass sciences change. Uh, we everybody anybody who knows anything about microwaves knows that a conduct conducting of microwaves can be done over a wire. Problem is that the wire itself uh, doesn't actually do the conducting. It's a, a relationship between uh, the frequency being conducted and the surface of the copper. And the actual frequency, the actual signal, never touches that wire. This is how they're able to use what's called waveguides at, at extraordinarily high frequencies, uh, similar to the way uh, x-ray machines work, as an example. So um, people want to see ET? That's simple. Um, you take a night vision goggle, and you simply adjust the electronics so that it presents what's called the negative, just like a photo negative, of the light you're looking at. The bright spots would become dark, and the dark spots would become light. And with a little bit of adjustment past that, you come to a point where you're going to see things walking around. That's called a higher level of frequency in terms of the basis with, within which those uh, beings reside. This is the type of thing that you're looking at. We're going to change. Now, what's neat is the whole planet goes with it. So uh, you still got the, you're still going to have the trees and and the uh, neat weather and you know not the nasty weather but the neat weather. You're still going to have a nice planet to uh, look at and enjoy. Um, the reset on the on, on the, back backing up to the the freedom part. Uh, the reset on this is going to be simple. There are emergency rations available for people who don't have food. There are people that are looking to take care of those people. Um, the Freedom Marines website has a specific listing called localization, and that's where communities get together and take care of each other. They reformulate what was going on back in the 50s, for those who can remember that far back, where um, you respected things, you respected elders. You didn't tear stuff up, but you went out and had a good time, and nobody messed with you. And <laughs> it don't get much better than that for a kid. So you combine all of these, all of these ideas. Uh, remember when you were a kid, and uh -huh. it may not be too, uh, you know tremendously pleasant, but think about being a, a, a kid again in terms of learning, in terms of what you don't know. That's the kind of advancement that you're talking about. Everybody, including people who know a lot of uh, or think they know a lot of science, are going to go back to grade school with a big thump. And it's everybody. Now, these uh, supposed angels, you can say they're ETs or whatever, I'll refer to them as angels, um, are supposedly going to instruct us. They're going to be our teachers and let us know how to act, how to teach us how to walk, I guess, in some, some respects, um, show us the paths, paths that are available in, in that new life, um, and we get to pick and choose what we want to do. And the, everything else is taken care of. I mean, it's, it's an extraordinary change. It's like that 25th century lifestyle uh, exhibited in Star, on Star Trek, where there was no money, people had food, you got a replicator that makes a cheeseburger if that's what you're after, uh, you know, and everybody has something to do. What is your interest? What would you really like to do? And this is where you go. Yeah, there won't be any shortage of anything. And uh, the Zero Point Energy document that uh, James has links to that he can provide for people, uh, it explains how it's possible to manifest the zero-point energy tetrahedron directly into whatever material object you want just by getting the right combination of frequencies. And this is all our material world is, or the other dimensions. They're just different frequencies of the same thing. Exactly. 
Exactly. So um, there's other things that go into this. Uh, I'm going to change phone, phone, so hold on a second. Well, he should be back in a moment here. Maybe a low battery on that phone. Uh, no, I was just walking outside to get my drugs. I smoke, so if I don't have my drugs, I get testy. Um, it's kind of like not having your coffee in the morning or not waking up right, that sort of thing. Um, I think better when I walk around as well. The um, the other things that go into this, uh, we've got an extraordinary problem in terms of this planet. Um, man is the only animal who quite literally takes a dump in his own nest. Oh, excuse me. Let me let me correct that. This is not man. And people are saying, well, we've done such a bad job of taking care of the planet. No, it's been a few people that own the factories that refused to pay the money to clean up their toxic hell. We had no choice but to work in those places because those were the only jobs that were available. We used the materials that they produced in those factories because we were told that that's what we had to do. And anybody that says we have have done such a bad job of taking care of the planet, I go right away and say, no, you're displaying the program behavior for taking responsibility for what these people have done to us. So uh, excuse me for correcting you on that, but we have not shit in our own backyard. They shit on our heads, excuse me for telling the truth. I fully agree with you. I'm not trying to... um uh, play the program game. What I'm trying to do is give an example that uh, we all participate in this to some extent. Uh, that can be the packaging on con- convenience food, the tin can that you got your food out of, or whatever. These things need to be, as such, reused. This is recycling, okay? The uh, part that I was leading up to is that the promise is to restore, to clean, and to uh, put back together the um, basic paradise that our planet was meant to be and used to be at one time a long time ago. So um, what you're looking at is that uh, the uh, as the planet is healed, so will we be. The uh, difference between what everybody thinks, the uh, fun and games that are going around, um, people are talking about uh, things like uh, reptilians and thises and that's. Well, there are an extraordinary amount of diverse uh, races. Um, and they don't all look uh, like we think they probably should, and we probably look pretty funny to them, too. So um, the... Uh, uh basis of it is is that uh learning to communicate finding somebody that is or some thing however you want to look at that that's totally different and figuring out how to talk to each other that is going to be an education and it's going to be i'm just i'm loaded with so many questions that uh uh i probably have to have two or three teachers at the same time and they'll probably have to hold on to me i'm just uh extraordinarily excited about the idea now there's a lot of people that go boo hoo about this uh, or poo-poo on it, or whatever. Um, there are varying places on this planet if uh, people have got the guts to go there and uh, experience some of the things I'm talking about. Uh, some of those, if you uh, happen to be capable, are in the Himalayan mountains. Some of those are in India, in uh, some of the land, some of what's called the high uh, flatlands. There's a couple of other areas uh, here in the United States that at one time were extraordinarily large cities, one of which is still buried and was just discovered not too long ago. There's extraordinary cities, one they just discovered about um, eight months ago in the Sahara Desert in the sand that makes New York City look like backwoods town. It's huge. It's thousands of miles across. Um, there are lights that I have seen that come on when you come into the room. Uh, the technologies used in terms of everybody's probably looking at a computer screen, and they probably got a tower, 
or they might be using a laptop or something like this. The problem man's got is that he's not got the intelligence to be able to understand what's called a direct interface. The problem is that you got a keyboard or you have a voice device or voice control. You operate off of something the machine does for you. Think about not having to have a computer screen, but simply a projection from your mind. Think about being able to do what your computer does in your own head. These are the types of differences, differentials between what we got now and what's coming. It is going to be extraordinarily dynamic. And the ills that have been perpetrated upon man are to be directly dealt with, to include the bad guys that have suppressed us for so long, screwed up the sciences, and allowed us to, live, to wallow in, in their filth that they, leave, that they have left over from their manufacturing, as you say, or whatever. So... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All there. Yes. They make you live in a, in a friggin' trash dump because they think that's funny. They think, honestly believe, they get their jollies on the, off of that. The, well, one of the, I, one of the I, games I, I, they play I, I, is uh, country against country. Uh, and they do this for profit. And I'm going to give you an example. Uh, if you want, you want fun in games, try this one. Supposedly this country called Israel and this other country called Iran are at odds. Ooh. Iran says, we ought to vaporize those Israelis. And Israel says, come on with it. We got some nukes over here, too. Uh Uh-huh. We're supposed to get in the middle of it and uh, get involved. You don't want to know what's funny. Both of them trade oil. Now, there are things called trading platforms where you trade equities, you trade uh, values. Guess who is partners on the trading platform that deals with this particular output of oil from Iran? Israel. Now, here's the neat part. They own the trading platform as equal partners. You want to know why the gas price went up? Israel needs the money, man. Now, All right. Oh, yeah. Now, the reason I mentioned veterans uh, today is because uh, their editor used to be uh, involved for some 30 years in foreign affairs. You want to learn these things, uh, I would suggest you go to that website and start looking. These reports are not only accurate, but they actually name names, dates, places, and what went on. And they don't pull any punches. They don't play the games that everybody else does. So the you know, this all this all boils back to getting ourselves our getting our stuff together. Be that clean in the planet, the technologies necessary to address diseases, uh through advanced sciences, uh the uh interface with some of those other races that come from the other planets that are inhabited in our uh our little galaxy. You want to see something huge you ought to get a picture, a view of the universe. You want to see something humongous? Oh man, there are. They say that there are as many stars in the sky as there are grains of sand on planet Earth. Our galaxy has almost that many. That's just our little galaxy. Now here's the kicker: there are as many galaxies as there are cubed amounts of or numbers of grains of sand on this planet. Uh, you're talking a number. It goes all the way around the, around the block and back. Uh, yes, I've looked at the vastness of the universe. <laughs> when you start seeing planets that are five billion times the size of the sun, that's pretty mind-boggling. Well, now we know where Superman lives. <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, there's been a question here, Drake, on them actually bringing in, uh, well, or shutting down the currencies, which there seems to be a lot of activity on right now. I'm noticing that uh, flying around on the news. Um, if, you're, uh, if the freedom movement's successful, well, then they won't have enough time to implement them, I would imagine. Is that right? Well, uh, they may start to come out with it, but the problem is you have to have it backed by something. 
There's a there's already what's called the Eastern Alliance that that consists of 130 some nations of the unaligned nations. Now the aligned nations are your G20, the rich countries, United States, Great Britain, Germany, people of that nature. Uh, the controllers are the G20. Now what that um, what that alliance did was it created its own banking system, which is fully transparent. You can see what's going on. The people decide whether or not they're going to loan money to somebody in terms of these extraordinary astronomical amounts that uh, these uh, banks like to play games with. Uh, if a country's going to loan somebody money, another country money at that level, it has to be approved by by the people on both sides of it. That sort of takes care of a lot of the trickery and fun and games. The um, other part of this is that they are having, having uh, certain elements of that financial system protect other small nations. That means that the G20, uh, G5, whatever you want to call them, um, no longer have the capability to go over to a foreign, small foreign country, take it over, loot that sucker, and leave, them in, leave everybody sitting in the dust. They can't do that anymore. So what that basically points to is the fact that the only thing they've got is the money that's available. Now, those controllers have sent our military to the South China Sea area, and we are attempting to take illegally uh, a couple of the vaults that contain hundreds of trillions of dollars in assets away from people uh, through direct, outright uh, banditry, robbery, theft, whatever you want to call it. And the uh, problem we've got is called China. They said no. They've also sent ships in and said, get off the island. You don't belong here and you know it. And uh, this is not going to last too long. I can tell you right now that the uh, people in charge of the military only take so much and it's gone well past what they can withstand from my estimation of it. So uh, <laughs> they're going to start backing out of those areas. As soon as that happens, then you will know that uh, the good guys, they call them white hats, gatekeepers, white knights, there's a lot of words for them. The good guys are then in charge. This you will know. Now, there is supposed to be a uh, pre-notification that uh, things are going to start happening. I'm supposed to be one of the contacts, and there are several others that I've designated. We're going to put this out like uh, free beer uh, on the Internet and uh, basically try to tell everybody, get ready, grit your teeth, fasten your seatbelt, uh, you know, hold on to the desk or whatever, here we go. Now, this is going to be about 24 hours before the actual actions, from what I understand. The other part of it is uh, a tactical positioning beforehand where there will be sweeps of record rooms uh, and things that they need to prosecute these people with. And this is going to be sudden. And these people do not know it's coming as such in terms of when. They are right now in an extraordinary uh, situation. Um, as you know, Europe has come unglued, and the euro is not going to last very much longer. Uh, to be quite honest, I'm surprised it's lasted this long, but the, our federal bank keeps throwing money at them, so it makes it look like they're, they're doing something. Um, as the euro goes, so goes the dollar. Um, you're looking at a takedown in a two, within a two-week period after the euro goes. Now, right now you've got uh, the nether the problem in the Netherlands. If you follow the news, uh, you also now have uh, the Swiss government telling the Fed to get out of their country. France is going down, and uh, Italy is not far behind France. Then you have Spain and a few others. The problem is, is that they are out of the liquidity that backs the currencies that the central bank uses, be that the euro. Or the dollar. The reason the dollar can withstand a little more time of it is simply because it's a reserve currency and has such supposed extraordinary value. 
Well, everything's going to be zeroed out. So the paper you got in your pocket, I would tell you to hold on to it because it's going to be revalued. I've been told that they're not going to come up with a new currency in this country right away. It's going to be phased in, and it's going to be on a one-to-one basis. Uh, the thing about the banking system, and I'm seeing some stuff in the chat and we're mentioning IMF and World Bank, and I'm going to address that so people get it. The IMF is the top of the Fed or Federal Reserve or central banking system. The World Bank is in between. The Bank of International Settlements is, is the top dog. In other words, it's the one that says your gold comes over to here to satisfy this account, that sort of thing. What we're doing takes the whole system down, period. They go. The people who are involved in the IMF, World Bank, and the Federal Reserve System, and a whole bunch of affiliated banks are going to jail. They're going to hold on to them until they get the, enough CPAs to go through the records far enough to find out what kind of a crook the guy is. Anybody who has been part and party to any form of death involving fundings, and this is what they do, they, back, they uh, loan Saddam Hussein money. They also loaned us money, and that's called uh, Iraq. And guess what? After we get out of there, and we've spent trillions of dollars in case somebody doesn't know, Guess who gets to pay the bill? All them poor dudes in uh, their PJs uh, with no shoes get to try, to try to scrape enough rocks out of the ground in order to pay, ba- pay back an amount that's not possible to be paid back, basically further, further enslaving them. We're enslaved. Anybody who works, anybody who um, has to scratch for a living, uh, are slaves. Now, part of the slave system is uh, uncalled for, and that's the part called uh, debt. Most of that is uh, imaginary. If somebody wants to understand debt, check out Iceland. Their premier told the central banking system this their fraudulent debt BS, we're not paying you a dime, and cut them off. Just recently, they forgave all the mortgages because that is also a fraud. Everybody's heard about you are the creditor. Well, you are. (laughs) The problem is they're not going to tell you that if they can get a couple bucks out of your butt, and sometimes more than that, and if they can ring it down to... It makes them happy. So there's a lot of things that goes into this, and it's it's not a simplistic thing, not in any way, shape, or form. But uh, starting here uh, in the United States as a bastion of freedom and running with that, the central banking system can be taken down from this location. Uh, Some of the the legalities have started, and there's more to come. So that's basically the routine I've got for that. Questions? I don't know if there's any in the chat room. I couldn't get into there. I'm sorry on that. Are you seeing any in there that you can get to, Drake? Well, I'm seeing people mention the UCC and uh, no mortgage relief. Well, well let, me, let me interject here just for a moment in case anyone doesn't realize. I don't normally mute everyone like I have tonight on, on the talk show. If you dial star 8, and I will be able to uh, know that you want to ask a question if you're on the phone on the talk to you. If you're on Freedom's radio site, it's star seven to unmute yourself, and then when you're done, star six to unmute. If anyone has a question, you can, um, let me know. Okay, we'll okay. open the lines now then. ET ain't my redeemer. <laughs> uh, some of this stuff is interesting, this chat. I'm on talk sheet chat. Yeah. Kill them, kill them all. <laughs> Anything you want to address there, go ahead. Uh, okay, well, uh, General Executor, uh, this is the same crap that has been on the Internet for three or more years. White Knight's my crippled butt. E.T. ain't my redeemer and all of you, and um, I'm not sure. I don't think you finished that because it probably wasn't something you could say over the open channel. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, let's see. I'm swearing to eternal damnation of this whole night. Of not lying or exaggerated about targeted individuals' uh, issues. Um, there's two. There's two takes on the, some of this stuff. Um, I say white knights or white hats or good guys or gatekeepers. Um, the people that are on our side and want the same freedoms everybody else does and are in a position to do something about it and willing to put their beer down, get off the couch, and go do something. Now, that's hillbilly. We'll break it back to uh, modern day where you're plugged into uh, some sort of electronic device 24-7. How about set that sucker down and actually go see if you can have a conversation with somebody other than a, a, a chat room screen? Uh, you might find that those people might want to uh, be free just like everybody else. And... Um, here we go. Uh, do you got what it takes to go and talk to somebody you might not know very well? And I'm going to add that another question. Who knows their neighbors? <laughs> you know, how many people have conversations? How many people talk to their talk to the people that they see on the street? Okay. Um, if people don't uh, quit the fun and games of the play and actually start doing something, those people are going to be the people that are going to really have the problems. Uh, those of us who are intelligent enough to know what's coming and have uh, prepared to an extent for it are much better uh, equipped to survive. Now, 2012 is here. We're looking at uh, a certain date coming up where uh, things are supposed to uh, change extraordinarily. Okay, what kind of change? Is it going to be the biblical level destruction? Is it going to be simply a raising of consciousness? Is it going to be something where uh, some of it goes and some of it doesn't? Uh, does anybody really know? Or <laughs> what is it? What is it that it takes for you? And I'm seeing a lot of uh, religiosity uh, in the chat. And uh, what is it? What uh, what would it take to convince you that some of this might be real? And do you got the guts to ask your God to show you and then be able to see, <laughs> manage what happens? Uh, not too many people have been visited by uh, angels, but uh, my take on this from what I've been told is that at this point in time, they're looking to make contact, okay? And this is the angels, right? This ain't uh, uh, some pie-in-the-sky ETs in a funny spaceship or any of this. I'm going to talk about angels. Uh, <laughs> you've seen the uh, angels come out of the sky with their wings and all this other stuff. Well, that's the sort of uh, experience you can have, if you like. Uh, they do things in a, a way that pleases the individual they uh, deal with. So who's got the guts to unplug? Who's got the guts to go meet? And who uh, has what it takes to help with a real effort to turn us back to freedom where we've been turned away from it for so long. How about the morality of the golden rule? Wouldn't it be needed if everybody acted that way, whether they felt like it or not? How about the simplicity of common law? No injured party, no damaged property, no crime. If you get out of hand, they put you in jail overnight until you calm down. And then they turn you loose. You ain't going to pay nothing. They don't tow your car away. And it'll cause you extra problems. Probably give you a ride back to your car or back to where the where it's parked at the bar when you got out of hand. Um, think about it. Think about not having to get out of hand. That there's no need to. Think about having the whatever you can think of being the very best and very absolute uh, honest good that you've ever experienced. That's basically what you're looking at. Somebody says they've seen a green the the reaper. Oh boy. <laughs> Man's law is where the mind gets warped, and many are in the stage of continual warp, continually warp. Mm. Okay, brain damage and shrinking. Uh huh. Fluoride vaccinations. Yep. Uh, vaccinations are a shock to the system. Period. Don't do it. Don't get a shot of any kind, let alone vaccinations. If you can't eat it as a pill, don't take the medication. If the medication has any kind of funky side effects, find something else. And if you can't find it within a medication, 
you should find a holistic doctor, someone who deals in natural health, and see that person. I would caution everybody to look and see what's in their drugs, the microcrystalline cellulose, uh, the polymers that are in the food supply being fed to us as cellulose. Um, prescription pills are, let's say, my last choice. I would go for herbals, which have a life force energy. Just as a footnote to anybody out there, I do not believe in pharmaceuticals. So do your research on the drugs. They generally have more side effects uh, and uh, contraindications than they do any possible benefits. So just a heads up. Yep. yep. And it's simple stuff, too. Things like whole ground cloves. Simple things. I, um, we, I have Tony, a, um, a researcher in Ontario, who's been researching old recipes back to the 1400s and has come up with incredible cures. Iodine is quite fantastic, he's discovered, and, and many other things that you can heal yourself. And the Chinese have food as medicine. And basically, if you're on top of things and you're aware of what's happening in your body, it doesn't need to reach a point of breakdown that you need to go to a doctor. You can intervene and straighten it out long before that happens. Right, Drake? Yes. Yep. Two things that are to be done. You can, you can go at this two ways. One is a treatment, and the other one is a preventative those are the two ways towards better health. And there's a gamut of products that uh, can do that for you. Well, let's throw an intervention at an early stage and then it never reaches the point where you have to go into treatment. Exactly. It's an awareness of your body. You have lived in your body all your life. How can you go into an office where the guy has never seen you before? He stands there. He tells you that you don't know anything about what's happening in you, but he does, and this is the first time he's seen you. Yet you've lived in that body all your life. I mean, you should be your own doctor, really. Um, that's true to an extent. If you know what to do with the uh, indications that you get, this is why I recommend someone who is familiar with holistic health because different things treat different things. Now, I mentioned whole ground cloves, and it's an antibacterial. It's also um, an extraordinary pain reliever, both internally and externally. Uh, there's a lot of things that can be done um, to uh, keep you from uh, experiencing problems. Uh, I see tea tree oil just came up. Uh, that's excellent for feet, for ears. Any kind of a problem you have with uh, skin in terms of over uh, replication of cells, this tends, and I say tends, to address that problem. So, um, Jack Oil of oregano I, will kill 450 different viruses, bacteria, fungus, and microbes. That is a powerful antiviral antibiotic. Yep. that everyone should have, and they're, and they're covered. Jack Daniels is a dang good pain reliever. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, it can also leave you with a head that you don't want to fool with the next day. Iodine, yes, iodine is okay, depending on if you know how to use it. Now, this well, is the thing. Internet is there for everybody, and they should turn off the damn TV, start educating themselves so that they can survive what's coming and start taking responsibility for their own health, their own body, and their own actions. It's a very simple formula. I just had a question about uh, the sheriffs going down. Uh, I've been in touch with the um, Constitutional Posse, which is an offtake of... Um, um, the uh, Sheriff Mac uh, constitutional sheriff uh, effort and um, they're not quite sure whether they want to start arresting uh, attorney generals and states or exactly how they're going to handle that yet uh, they're looking into it strongly now I've got some people that have, added, that have uh, uh, offered armed uh, ex-military ex-police who are fully trained and competent to assist that sheriff. So if the man wants help, it's been offered. 
Anything about the rumors today about the Russian stock market and the complete collapse of some of the biggest bank in Iceland? Yes, both all are true. The Russian stock market, uh, I think everybody heard that uh, Putin issued a, an arrest warrant for a certain individual for uh, financial terrorism in his country. Well, this is the, he stepped back and got out of there and did it through his lackeys, his agents in there, and uh, screwed up the um, Russian stock market from a distance. And now the Russian stock market has been closed again. Nobody knows when it will reopen. Now, banks are going to go. It does not matter what country they're in or the size that they are. They're going to disappear off and on. Uh, one day to be on, the next day to be off, and you might not know uh, in between what uh, is going to happen to it. Uh, you got to understand that this is not just uh, this is not a real simple thing. You've got a bunch of interrelated things going on at the same time. And um, as with, as an example, the um, uh, deal with the uh, Russian stock trading, uh, you got to watch out because uh, ours has been shut down a couple of times. If everybody will remember about uh, 2008, uh, we had an extraordinary uh, crash in the market. Well, that was perpetrated by... Uh, one of the central banks in uh, Europe that managed to pull several trillion dollars out of our economy in a matter of a few minutes. And if it hadn't been for Stockwatch turning them off, they probably would have got the whole thing in a matter of about 10, 15 minutes. Totally cleaned us out. So there's some ID th uh, theft for you. Um, then you got all these banks like Bank of America, Citi, um, <laughs> etc. Those people are gone. Bank of America is uh, an extraordinarily dirty bank in terms of their manner of business practice, uh, as well as the funds they get. Interacting with the and more open public, finding appearance lends support to your credibility. Oh, thank you. Uh, I don't mind answering questions as I see them in the chat room, or from individuals on the on the um, uh, uh, radio show itself. It doesn't matter to me. And uh, there's only certain limitations. I cannot give certain individual um, indicators where I'll hint that some, this person did that or whatever. And I will not out my uh, contact sources or anybody directly involved. The only uh, documentation you'll see is it is presented against these bad guys. Now, I was just asked, can I tell about the Morgellon? Well... The Morgellon is basically a programmed nanosystem that uh, is programmed in such a fashion that you've got several portions or stages to it. Uh, what it does basically, it is, uses uh, over-unity uh, capabilities to uh, tap into the um, zero-point energy, and there's a difference between those two people don't understand. When you combine the two, then you get the capability of fomenting matter, which is what they do. They end up uh, creating what's called uh, crystalline uh, shapes of different uh, formats within your body. They also have a tendency to create extraordinarily long tentacle uh, connections to your electrical system in terms of your nervous system, as well as your uh, acupuncture points, and they seem to uh, derive... Uh, a lot of their energy from the DNA radiation. Your DNA has a radiant quality to it, and it's uh, one of the things that keeps your goodies together, so to speak. Uh, these things are a combination of bio-machine. You probably have uh, heard of the Terminator and things like that. Well, we got little bitty ones running around, and they are screwing things up good. So, Within right. the body, yes, they they are. They're frequency activated, and they do actually go through a building process where they morph into other substances. Uh, you can Google questions on uh, poly polymer morphology or any aspect of the polymers that you want to find out about, like their pH assembly range and that, just by typing in your question and then typing in uh, self-assembling polymers. And you'll find a lot of this information on the Morgellons, including the pictures of the growth patterns and the way they control them with the frequencies. 
uh, setting the growth pattern by changing the frequencies. All of this is in their published documents on the polymers. One thing I'm seeing in the chat room right now is uh, more information on Morgellons and Healing, bodyelectrician.com, Dr. Will Spencer. Brian knows Will Spencer. Uh, I've tried to get these two back together again uh, over time because both of them have uh, good information. Uh, Will's got a lot of uh, uh, compound uh, natural ingredients that can help tremendously. I take his products, and I recommend them. Uh, the reason I do is that those things are uh, just about as good as it gets. And I've been taking organic vitamins, and I mean really good ones, for years. When I started taking his stuff, it was like a light of day. Somebody flipped my switch kind of thing. Uh, let's see, birth certificate. Well, the birth certificate's not going to be an issue, and that will come out in the next few days. Uh, I just want to inject that uh, the microeffect.com is a good site for uh, using different herbs and things for making your medicine. That's the microeffect.com. Sorry uh, about that, Derek. Yep. Now, here's another one. I am extremely concerned with the lack of civilian oversight that your secretive military financial faction is engineering. All right. Uh, what you've got to remember is this. The agreement is that they will operate under civilian authority only. Okay? That is your oversight. The oversight will be that there will be certain people appointed, but... These people will be disengaged totally from the military in terms of being a civilian officer holding the office designated. In short, you're going to need certain positions filled in order to keep the whole system from crashing. The idea of that is that the uh, communications and a few other things can remain uh, active during the transition. Now, any appointee, any person put into any office is going to be put there only on a temporary basis and only with limited powers. And it is not, and I say this again, not permanent. The military wants to fully support a free civilian society. They are sick and tired of being the bad guys. And you saw what the White House did. They turned around and dumped on them. Well, there's information that goes along with that that some people are uh, kind of missing. They're saying, oh, the White House stuff didn't have anything to do with it. Then I'm going to ask them what they were doing with all those uh, kilos of cocaine in their rooms and why uh, the uh, expensive uh, ladies of the night would be sitting around a bar. That's not what they do, unless they're paid to do so. There's too many questions. That's gobbledygook. I know people in the Secret Service, and I know people in Delta Force. I also know people that are um, have extremely high security clearances. These people don't act that way. Sorry. <laughs> don't fly with me, and all I've got is just a simple assumption. Taking of officials bond for the individuals, man or woman, to get these corrupt officials. Okay. I don't think you're going to have to worry about it, and I'll tell you why. Uh, other than on a local level, that's governor and below, uh, the bond issue is not going to be the issue. The issue is, do you want to pay them anymore? The issue is, uh, do you want to take them to jail? The issue is, are they dirty? Those are the issues. You don't have to play the, the legalistic freedom um, philosopher routine with these people. You can simply take them to jail. They have create, committed fraud. So that's basically, you know, start from there. Uh, they have a uh, responsibility to the uh, uh, community in which they serve at whatever level that is, and that community or public responsibility get, has some teeth in it. So, just state, just okay. stating it, Drake does. We were uh, audited by Health Canada here. And when I reminded them that they were a public servant, they lost all their power. And we <laughs> all need to do that. We all need to remind the government employees that they are public servants. They are there to help me, not to cause me problems. 
And oh, Drake, I want to go back to you were talking about individual rights between countries at the beginning of the story, uh, the show, and the differences there. I want to point out to everybody that the Canadian Charter of Rights. If you go through that, it will it will state right in it that it applies only to government employees. And so this is how, yeah, they've they've tricked us all the way through here, and it makes me question why Trudeau was so adamant about bringing in that Charter of Rights in our Constitution. Well, that should be a good indicator right there. Any advantage it must limit us in some way. And there I see it does just as a government employee. So just to there you go. racism will be a thing of the past. Equal playing field, right, Drake? I'm gonna tell you that all of the sociology and I mean all of it, I don't personally care if somebody uh happens to be homosexual. As long as they don't bother me with it, I don't care. Now it bothers me seeing two guys or two girls kissing that messes with me that's not what I feel should be correctly done however each individual was given by God the right to choose and that right of choice is believe or not as you so choose that's you individually personally you make those choices and if it's wrong you'll find out about it I'm not gonna make that decision because I got things in my past I wouldn't want to be judged on I got things that I do sometimes that ain't exactly cool or the best thing in the world to be done I don't think that I want to be judged for eternal damnation or something of this nature uh, for the fact that I uh, lost it and got mad at somebody for no, for not having a real good reason to do so. Um, racism is manufactured by the government. The separation of culturalism is manufactured by the government. Any manner of control that you find is manufactured by the government. Um, there are very few things that in in life that are simpler than understanding being free. Anything that offers control is a form of something that is contrary to freedom. Now, you should exercise self-control. 500 miles an hour in a school zone is not cool. Kids are stupid. They will run out in front of you just to see if you got good brakes. They're like those little birds that go zipping across the windshield. Every once in a while, one of them don't make it, make it, and you go cha-ching, and a big pile of feathers goes up in the air. Uh, you have to remember that there are responsibilities that go along with the freedom. One of those responsibilities is to make sure that you do not uh, play games with other people uh, unconscionably. You can fun, and you can enjoy yourself, but you don't ridicule. That's BS. Um, they're trying to talk about the preface to the D.C. Code. No new law or created non, non, or none are repealed. It is presumed the law until rebutted. Okay, well, that's all well and good. Let me express this so you get it. The uh, Freedom Packages uh, statement of sovereignty that each of these states have done does one thing. It lists the 1787 Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the uh, Articles of Confederation, and we resurrected the Declaration of Independence. Those are the documents we will follow. We have divorced in the meetings that we had that these little individual groups in the states did. Uh, all forms of attachment, agreement, or uh, a participation with the corporate government. What that means is that they no longer have control. That also means that we are no longer playing their game. That means that we no longer need to wash dishes because they ran up a bill at the restaurant. Uh, this means that the central banking system has to pay its bill that it created artificially. This means that man can now take his freedom back away from those who would have you be a slave. Just that simple. Nothing complicated about it. But you've got to remember that the, the gist of this is very simple. The freedom of choice. What do you choose to do? Are you are you some kind of uh, dink that drops all kind of whatever packaging their candy bar comes in on the floor? Do you do that at home? And if not, why not? Because mom or your wife would beat you with a broom if you did that. Uh, you might think about doing that when you go outside. You might think about just, you know, so what you end up with a little pile of trash? Put a bag in the car. 
uh, you know, be responsible to not just yourself, but the next person that comes along that would like to go in the woods and not see beer cans might appreciate it if you'd take those cans with you. Simple. Nothing complicated. It's a manner of living of call, that's called simple responsibility. What would you like to see when you go wherever it is you want to go? Uh, now we got another one. Will we still have to have social security number? Ah, quit it. Uh, social security number for driver's license, voting, health care, etc. All of the things that you have that limit you in any way, shape, or form are going to be done away with. Now, social security is going to be funded for ever. Now, by forever, I mean that there are people are going to get a functional amount of funding. Each individual will. Now, you got to remember, food replicators, that means you ain't even got to go to the grocery. Okay? Driver's license, well, they got a little thing in the Constitution called uh, freedom of travel, so you can forget the driver's license. Voting, when this comes loose, uh, health care is going to be taken care of. But voting is going to be important. That's going to be open 24-7 so that everybody can start making their mind up as to exactly what they want to see things be so that we don't have these idiots come loose uh, again and enslave us so that that cannot be done again. Very simple. Uh, schools are going to actually teach something for a change instead of this stupidity. The uh, records, everybody knows as history, is going to be re- restored, and this time it's going to be done accurately. And you know, everybody has heroes like uh, George Washington or uh, Lincoln or somebody like that. And you got no idea how treasonous some of these people were. Now they were forced; they owed the bill, and they said, "You either pay the bill or you do this." That's what the bankers, okay, Rothschilds, directly told them. So. You know, I'm not so sure that, you know, maybe he wasn't really as nasty as we thought, but didn't have a choice. In today's world, what they do is they will take you and uh, <clears throat> tie you to a chair, and you get to watch your family get tortured to death slowly over several days. If we get done with that, then they start on you. You don't know about corrupt courts, okay? Divide everything you know about uh, law and the courts by common law. And that takes care of it. I'm telling you, it, it does all of this. You won't have a distinction in terms of courts. There is not going to be a uh, problem in terms of uh, a common law court, which should be the way things should be, uh, and the admiralty courts that you keep running across. So there's a whole bunch of stuff uh, that that's going. The, uh, Man does not have to live um, the way he has. I mean, we've been stuck in a trash pile because a uh, big uh, business decided it was funny to dump on us. Uh, we live in, in manners. We, li- we eat things that ain't good for us, and they know it. They put stuff in uh, McNuggets that's addictive. Um, you know, good grief. I mean, where do you get off of that? Um, <laughs> there, it, it just goes on and on. I mean, um and it's not going to get better until each and every individual uh, does what that old movie says. I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm a human being and entitled to a certain amount of dignity, and you will treat me accordingly. And you know, one, <laughs> yeah, one of the th- things that we really need to do is we need to grab Hollywood back from them, and we need to start putting out movies and shows that will start changing the psyche from chill everything in sight to helping your neighbor and feeling good rather than death and destruction. Exactly. So, I mean, you know, like, like I say, we've got a long way to go. Uh, we've got a lot of science to go through. Um, I do the best I can in terms of trying to involve people and let them know about things. Um, um, and I would like... To, to be real honest, I would love to have somebody send me a, uh, a recorded copy of this uh, show because I've got some people who would like to hear what I've got to say. Um, I get the, uh, the distinct impression that people want to know what to do. They're hungry for freedom, but it's been denied and they've been beat down so long that if you leave the cage door open, they don't even bother trying to leave. And that's sad when you think about it. 
Well, I'm no, sure I, I, call, uh, yeah. Drake, this call will be available in the archive here where you, if you're on the chat window, you know how to get on there. It's just the same thing. Just go there and uh, you'll be able to get the archive tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Drake, to go back to that, the analogy of the people being locked in a cage, it's not that if you open the door that they don't know what to do to leave. It's that they will go and grab that door and pull it closed because something will invade them and attack them. That's what it's gotten down to, my friend. Yeah, well, that's only, that's only part of it. You forgot about hiding in the corner under the blanket after you get the door shut. Well, that's about what it is. It's like not in hell. Just leave me alone. Just please leave me alone. I won't do anything. I won't say anything. Uh, now we got people wanting free energy uh, info. Yeah, well, Bearden's site has references to free energy technology. Um uh, forget the name of that, Jennery or something of that nature. Uh, put Bearden in there in your uh, search engine, and it'll come up. I do know that much. Uh, and I built several free energy devices. I know how Tesla uh, powered his car. Uh, I'm familiar with uh, a whole lot of sciences that are supposedly real advanced, but they're not really as advanced as people think. And the reason I say that is I talked to uh, a guy who does the – um, Star Trek, Star Trek, darn, I can talk here, I'll be all right. Star Trek technology, he builds it. He builds it for covert operations. Uh, and I'll give you an example. Uh, if you've got a uh, nodule that speak to the, speaks to this other nodule, it does not make any waveforms at all. The communication between these two nodules sends the signal into another dimension. And ain't nobody but nobody can listen to your phone call. Just that simple. And, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> off and down the road you go. Uh, and uh, email correspond. Okay. Uh, so uh, Bearden, uh, Bearden's website is uh, one place you can find out about free energy. You go inside there and he's got references to it because he's been asked about that a lot. Now, uh, he deals with a, a combination of things. Um, he looks, the free energy idea is nice, so long as you know how to um, produce what you're looking for. Um, I've got a couple more parts to buy, and then I'll, be, I'll put mine into uh, position, and I'll be off the grid. So, you know, and there's uh, communications. I mean, it, Anything, any field you can think of, you're talking about the same advances from the, uh, say, 40s to now. That much difference. Multiply it by two, that's how much difference this one step's going to take. I mean, it's going to be huge. So, Well, yeah. just in one of the showings of, of the differences in the technology that we were exposed to and what they were using was I noticed that well, I'm an electronics technician, so I'm aware that in the 40s they got the silicon transistor. But I see now through my research that they were spraying us with nanotechnology, self-assembling polymers that are assembled and controlled by um, by different radio frequencies. They were spraying us with that in the 50s and using nanotechnology. Right after we got the transistor, within 10 years, Hmm, it raises a lot of suspicion as to where it came from, Drake. I know. I know. And that came from a place called Area 51. There was a crash out there. Well, actually, see, this is something else, too. <laughs> uh, there's a thing called uh, uh, Operation Black Book. This is the part that they don't want nobody to see of the thing called Blue Book. Everybody's heard of Blue Book. Well, Black Book is the part they don't want out. And what's really comical is that for some reason, E.T. had trouble negotiating uh, the area that we know as Area 51 down around Roswell. They were averaging at one point um, six, eight crashes a month. Now, <laughs> you know, I don't know if that's kind of like uh, taking your roadster out on a curvy road and seeing how fast you can go. Uh, or what the deal might be. E.T. may be that type. I don't know. 
but uh, they were collecting stuff out there for on a regular basis for years. So who knows what they got? Uh, the uh, some of the people that worked at Area 51, uh, I ended up contacting and became friends with. Some of the stuff that they talked about going on out there, where uh, you put on the right kind of a suit and fire it up the right way and walk through a solid wall. Now you think about how screwy that would, you know, I mean, how are you going to lock somebody up if when you put the handcuffs on them, they hand them back to you? That sort of messes up the whole deal, you know? Uh, put them in a jail cell and they walk, they go home. <laughs> How'd you go home? I walked out through the wall, I got on the bus and went home, you know? <laughs> uh, you know, okay, how do you know that your military fascist is not engineering another Permanent military dictator like happened in Egypt and Libya. Because I have known these people for about 30-some, well, let's make it 40-some years. Um, and I know uh, their uh, morality and their political views. And uh, I know that these certain individuals also are keeping what's called the plan and keeping to it. That plan started back around the Korean War because the United Nations thought it was cute to uh, find out what we were doing militarily and broadcast that crap, troop movements, our tactics, our troop strength, whether we had tanks or not, to the enemy. Now, what's really, really funky is that this is in the records. It's in open records. It's easily available. Go find it. Put it out on the Internet, and that will give you an idea as to the um, people we're dealing with. They are not nice. They will do to you whatever they can get away with just because it's fun to, fun for, to see you jump. Uh, let's see. If this guy bleeds, I wonder how, long, how far he can run. Just cut him and see. All that sort of thing. Real wonderful things. Uh, so we're going to have to have some changes. Uh, as Brian was saying, um, I've seen... Uh, really extraordinarily entertaining movies. Uh, one of those would be Man of the House, about some cheerleaders and some bad guys. Another one would be, and this is sexy, but it's actually a pretty good movie, uh, called uh, Burlesque. Um, there are some other movies. Um, I like The Quiet Man, but that's kind of violent, actually. It's a big fight. Um, some of the old John Wayne stuff is what I thought was cool. Uh, in, our, in terms of how to act when you go to Vietnam, uh, I found out real quick that that didn't work too well. Uh, I think it scared our guys worse than it did the enemy. Um, but there, um, I remember as a kid watching the wonders uh, of the outdoors. Now, there's a problem. Our kids are plugged in. We need to unplug them, put them outside, and close the door and let them go figure out how to have fun, use their imagination, develop their brains, develop their physical capabilities, see if they can ride the, ride their bicycle faster than sunlight. Um, you know, the whole nine yards, the stuff that they need to do that really are developmental. Uh, you want to produce scientists, you want to produce engineers, you want to produce somebody that uh, is capable. I don't know of any better way than simple play because as you start getting into things, you start learning. Now, yeah, you got uh, classroom, but the classroom can be uh, minor. Uh, in relation to experience, the classroom teaches about uh, somewhere between 3 and 10 percent of what a person learns. Now, there's been advances in education, and one of those is called the uh, interactive um, um, uh, what is that called? Uh, Interactive uh, Halo Inductor is the name of the product, and it hooks up to a computer, and uh, it's not very uh, it's not very uh, invasive. Fits on your head pretty nice. It's relatively comfortable. Uh, you can get it either wireless or wired. If you when you sleep, if you don't roll around a lot, wired is fine. If you move around a lot, wireless is the type you want to get. And what you do is you uh, turn your computer on uh, and you want to learn something and you have a book to read and that book is programmed into your head by way of this halo inductor 
you actually experience the knowledge in it. So you don't get just learn in terms of the knowledge of something like you would reading a text, but actually like you had your hands on it and actually did it. This is and this has been around since uh, let's see here. Um, it was first outed in uh, seventy eight and became popular in eighty five and. They started getting their decent contracts and whatnot about 90. It's fairly new in terms of the application. But, you know, there's an example. Modern in science. the wrong hands, this could create the... I'm concerned. I'm concerned with this technology coming out and uh, it, everybody having access to it. And again, if we have a rise of any... Um, of the dark people in the background, just uh, maybe the next time there won't be any chance to stop them because they'll do it all invisibly. I mean, with this kind of technology, how are we going to possibly screen them and without becoming like the NWO and, uh, you know, putting them in jail for uh, potential future crimes? Uh, there's a whole lot of moral conflicts and, and issues here that aren't going to be easy to solve. <laughs> um there are ways to already tell that. We have um, readings of a combination in a combination of different ways that can tell whether or not you are going to be a criminal. They can tell your general behavioral pattern as you um, grow up, and they can also uh, determine uh, primarily most of most or any of the diseases you'll have. That's our medical technology to date. Uh, I keep seeing reference. Uh, why should we trust your word that your secretive uh, military manufacturer is not uh, engineering another military dictator like Egypt and Libya? I already answered that. It's called the plan. The plan is called freedom, and it is adhered to strictly. Those who do not want to adhere to it will be ejected from the country. Uh, if they decide to object uh, strenuously, they will be dealt with accordingly. If need be, uh, and these people decide that they're going to be an, an extraordinary problem in society, they won't be around very long. Uh, I don't know if the neighbors will shoot them or if they'll be executed for crimes. Hopefully we'll catch them before they commit such crimes. So, you know, why should you trust my word? Well, do you trust God? It ain't, I ain't God, obviously. And I sure ain't no J.C. trying to lead somebody across a pond on, walking on the water. What I'm trying to tell you is that you uh, should, if you have done any of your homework and research, seen the documentation of the liens on the 12 central banks. If you want to go see it, go to Define uh, Cosmos, uh, David Wilcox site, and he's got it listed there. So, you know, how far do you want to go? I mean, <laughs> you know, th this is this is real. It's happening, and I'm trying to prepare you. Greg, this is Charles Stewart from Oregon. We've talked before. I'm the one type in the comments there about Egypt and Libya. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to salute you, first of all, for, for having the courage to come on and and talk in James Madison Conference here. That goes to your credibility. Thank um, you. But, uh, I, again, like my comments in, in uh, chat there indicate, I'm extremely concerned that there's no verifiable assurances being given for civilian or oversight and um, control of, of this entire process, um, and, and further the, the lack of uh, accountability with any um, uh, nobody is willing to identify themselves as being leaders who the constitutional scholars and groups like this can contact to verify that there's um, um, any type of accountability or provisions in place for civilian oversight. I see none of this, and I, I can't imagine that it's impossible to engineer something to give more accountability and assurances to the common people that are sitting by and, and very concerned about what's being engineered for us here. Okay, I just got one question. Sure. It's really simple. How many people do you want to kill? I don't want to kill anybody, sir. Hey, hold on a minute now. I'm not playing games with you. We've already had sure, sure. They've already killed 14 of us, and we well, haven't done anything nasty yet. Well, well, I, I'm I'm willing to take front line. I'm willing to risk being killed. I, I think that you, you're you're obviously willing to risk being killed, but I, I I don't see anybody willing to step up 
yet or, uh, or even being offered positions to step up to risk themselves being killed and, and, and step into positions of leadership for civilian oversight that can give assurances to the common people that it, this isn't another Egypt and Libya that's being engineered for us here. I understand that. Now, I answered part of that question in uh, a little bit of a short, short part. Uh, I personally know a lot of the people that are involved in this and have for a number of years. I have personally read a portion of the plan. I personally worked for about eight months trying to find a group of people who would follow simple directives and could not accomplish that. What has transpired is that we put together um, by, well, not actually by accident, but by intent, um, a group of people who have basically set the country free in terms of the paperwork. Now, here's the problem. The problem is that if any at any time uh, anybody is hinted at or they have a, any suspicion that they are leaky, and I don't mean in terms of something important, I mean the minor stuff, just simple news that's going around that they don't want out, uh, they strip them of their uh, security clearances and put them in the slammer. Who's that? <laughs> The, uh, have you watched so? Have you watched the news lately about uh, the Secret Service and Delta Force? Right, right. Okay, that's all. Gar that's all garbage. The reason I know this is I've talked to some of the people who are principal in it. Okay, that is made up. Now, if you want to, you want to. The, the people, these people want to get funny about it. Here's how it is. Uh, <clears throat> the White House staff was so busy doing cocaine they didn't have time to look out the window and see what else was going on. Okay. The other part of it is, is that part of the lead force was designated to set up the social, the Secret Service, and the Delta Force. Now, the other part of this goes to uh, the removal, intentional removal, of all sheriffs. Now, there's a reason for these three actions. This is an effort by the cabal to try to effectively take over some of the things that we consider freedoms. Right. Actively, we are actively fighting this. Sheriff Mack, um, as I said, I, told, I think I mentioned Mr. Christian. I believe it's Delaware. Uh, he's having a problem down there where uh, Biden's uh, uh, boy or uh, brother or whoever the <clears throat> turkey is is trying to uh, take the arrest powers away from the sheriff. Right. Well, people don't understand what the importance of this is. The sheriff is the backbone. Right. Of common law, the right. sheriff was supposed to be the mitigator between foes. In other words, I want my fence over there. No, it's going to go over there. And he comes out, figures it out. And if you really can't agree, then you get what is called a, a mediator. The mediator looks at both sides of it and say, okay, uh, <clears throat> I think there was a certain person that drew a sword and said, how about we cut the baby in half? Pretty simple, okay? Anyway, the ideology is justice, not law enforcement. Uh, you can go to protect and serve. That's okay. Not law enforcement because all you got is common law, and the only enforcement is injured party, damaged property, okay? Going back to this, you had Secret Service and Delta Force, those are and with the sheriff, and you have taken out primarily the basis of what's called civilian law. Federal marshals uh, have the power under both uh, governmental and civilian authority to direct the civilian law enforcement. The federal marshals are supposedly be put, being put into place uh, to take the place of the sheriffs. That tells me that these are strictly military people. There's a big difference between uh, what's happened, what's transpired in the past, and what's uh, going on today. The difference is ask them if they are constitutional. That's the difference. That's the key to it. Okay, now, first of all, I've known these people for 30 years, give or take, more in some cases. I've worked with them. Uh, the other part is that uh, I have served under some at different points in my own uh, short military career. And 
this is the guarantee. If a person is not willing to follow the plan, then they are excluded from it. This includes each and every last benefit of any kind that could ever be offered. There's no more advancement in rank. There's no more um, put my 20 years in and get out. They will find an excuse to get rid of you at that point. The, and the military has been cleansing itself for quite some time in this manner. Now there's two ways to look at this new uh, maneuver. First of all, you leave the sheriffs alone. Secondly, you do introduce federal marshals to areas so that they're familiar with the sheriffs and can implement the process I'm talking about. The um, Are you saying the federal people, marshals are, the plan requires the federal marshals to displace the sheriffs? That's what they're trying to do. I, I got to object to that. The, the sheriffs should stay in place. The federal marshals are not more worthy, trustworthy, or more constitutional than the sheriffs. I understand that. Well, yeah. what, what's coming down through the plan here, Drake? Have you heard the name Biden? Pardon me? Have you ever heard the name Biden? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we got one that's a VP, and we got one that apparently is the uh, Secretary of State. I believe it's Delaware. I, I could be wrong about that. Um, I'd have to check my notes pretty close for that, but uh, uh, this Secretary of State is the one that's fomenting or starting this process, okay? Biden and his family are dirty, just like big ears. Right, right. People are crooks. These are the people that are going to jail for long term, okay? Now, what I'm trying to express to you is that we need to, collectively as a people, support these law enforcement officers because they are our protection. Not only do they <laughs> help with uh, legal problems, uh, idiots that don't know how to act right and that sort of thing, they're also our legal protection. Okay, now, the maneuvers being made where a federal marshal might be placed in the office that was occupied by a sheriff can be a two-way street. Uh, this is this can be a part of what's called the operational parameter of the plan. Now, remember, I stated the military would be the big brother. You got the federal marshals going out to local law enforcement and engaging with them to make a civilian action. It very well may be that the covert operation is that it looks like the sheriff's being replaced when he's not. That Sounds like being replaced, that, that, that he is simply waiting for the word to go ahead with these mass arrests. It, it sounds like the, the sheriff's being replaced. Drew. I know it does. And what you got to remember is that not every action is a one-way street. I have found very few that are not at least a two-way street. This sounds uh, like a military takeover, Drake. Well, that's fine. Uh, you can believe what you want. But most of the militias are on readiness. I, I placed them there. And I mean almost everyone you can find everywhere. Uh, then to go along with it, they are have been instructed by me to be as ready as possible. Don't pull the trigger right at first. Scout first. Have a scout. Have somebody that uh, can be the eyes and ears. Uh, a lookout, however you want to look at that, okay? I have an, um, <laughs> the capability with one phone call, one email, to mobilize over a million and a half ex-military, present duty military, veterans, and uh, people they've trained. And these people are not lightly armed. They're capable of taking down our very best aircraft or, our very, or taking out our very best armor. These people can handle, on a covert basis, an extraordinary amount of action if need be. The military has been advised of this, okay? I told them. They know. They also know that if they take me out, these people will act on their own. They've already got a chain of command and everything set up. It's already in place. This already has been done once before. It this, is be not, um, this is not the game everybody thinks, looks at it as. It's not as easily done in terms of they think they can take over. Well, I tell you right now, if they are, they won't live very long because I know a lot of people that have been wanting to shoot one of these 
bad guys for quite a while for varying reasons. They feel it's their patriotic duty, for one thing. Um, I mean, it goes on and on, but it sounds like a military takeover. It's not. The agreement is the plan. The plan states that the military uh, acts only on our or civilian or the people's authority. We gave them the uh, official authority to start their action. Excuse me a second. I got to be nice. I got deer in my yard. I walk out sometimes on the porch and they they freak out. If I don't speak to them, they really get excited. They was standing there eating grass. <laughs> That's good. They're not frightened. Okay, so what you're dealing with is the appearance. If you look at it one-sidedly, that it is a military takeover. What you got to remember is that everything that is done can be a two-way, generally can be a two-way street and usually is. So it may not be an absolute replacement. It may be a placation of, oh, we can do it here, okay? And they did, they're did. they doing it, okay? They might do it three or four places. What they may not know is that those people that they've placed in those positions may have already been uh, recruited to the good guys. They may not know that there are enough militiamen in an area to handle the situation. Now, if you want to see the difference, look at a place called Ruidoso, New Mexico. They already had an incident there. They told the feds came in and told the sheriff what they were going to do. And the sheriff said, no, you ain't. And he said, oh, yeah, you are. We're the feds. We can do anything we want. He got on his radio. Ten minutes later, they had 200 militiamen in the woods surrounding the feds. And the sheriff said, you sure you want to or do you want to leave? And that's basically where it's at. The people make the decision. And I'm trying to get this across to everybody. <coughs> Gun sales have uh, continued to set records. Now, why do you think that is? People know that there's some something coming down the road, and they want to be ready to be able to shoot at it if it gets too funny. So I don't think a military takeover is going to be the best situation. If you only got 20% of the troops, and you only got somewhere in the same area of cooperative people, uh that puts them at a pretty nasty disadvantage. Yeah, I mean, if you got all the, the sheriffs displaced by U.S. federal marshals, then you have centralized federal control, and, and you've taken out the, the individual sovereignty of, of the grassroots capability of fighting back. Really? I still got a gun in my pocket, and they come and got it. Yeah, but you've, 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 you've undermined the lawful authority of the local jurisdiction. I understand that. But what you got to remember is... That can be reinitiated very rather rapidly. There's no just three or four. Listen, to one, three or four hundred people place, up, until somebody know what are they going to do. There's no justification for displacing the sheriffs for the first place. Agreed. I agree with you 100. Well, then how the plans doing that? The plan doesn't do that. It, it, you just and said that the, the marshals are taking over the federal jurisdiction. I thought. Hold on and listen. There are a few incidences of this happening. It's being addressed. I don't know if you've heard of Sheriff Mack, but I'm in touch with the man, and we're working out uh, tactics, and we're implementing movement of people as we speak. Now, if that Sheriff Christian, and I believe it's in Delaware, needs assistance, I can have 200 people there tomorrow. And if that's what he needs, it's no problem. Okay? Now, the second part of this is that I told Sheriff Mack that, uh, first of all, I'm familiar with Biden and the fact that he's been unconstitutional, illegal, unlawful, and a a general butthole. I'm trying to be nice here, guys, um, in a lot of different ways for over a period of years. My immediate suggestion was that 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 Sheriff Christian take all of his men, go down there, and arrest the mother and put him in jail. Yeah. Well, oh, we don't think that's a good idea. Well, yeah, it is. That's the only recourse that you've really got. Now, whether that happens or not, I don't know. I'm not in charge. I'm not the sheriff. Were I the sheriff, the man would have been in jail. Right. What 
why, why doesn't the sheriff do all of the arresting with just the U.S. Marshals and the military backing up the local sheriff? That's what they're planning to do. Well, your words earlier indicated that the marshals and or the military was going to be in charge. No, listen to me very careful. The plan stipulates this, that the military will back up. In other words, you may need a, a load of extra hands if there's a lot of people involved in this, and in some places there will be. They will back up the federal marshals. The federal marshals will engage with, in other words, in cooperation with, the local law enforcement who will do the actual arresting. So it will be a civilian action. Will, will the, all of the arresting powers be under the control of all of the 3,400 or so sheriffs across the USA? Yes. Okay. Now, that's what trying to do I, now. You're setting I, my heart to ease. Uh, that, that's excellent. Uh, is, is there a way we can, you know, maybe get that single page out of a copy of the plan so that, you know, if, if we're no. getting paranoid or something, we can give assurances to people about these things? No. We'll not see the plan until after the mass arrest. I can't even get to it. It's but we've well, got your assurances that the, the, the local sheriffs will be in charge of all arresting processes, correct? They better be. If they're not, there's a bunch of civilians that are going to take that process into their own hands. Okay, and it won't be the U.S. Marshals in charge. It'll be the sheriffs in charge, exactly. at least as far as we're capable of, right? Exactly. The federal marshals can uh, prefer federal charges against these individuals. Now, therein lies the compliment to the sheriff. See what I'm saying? A sheriff can arrest somebody for fraud. He can't arrest somebody for federal charges. It takes a federal marshal to do that, and that's where these federal marshals come in. If somebody needs to go to jail on federal charges, then he just simply makes out, makes out the form. Here you go, sheriff, take him in. And if they ain't got enough sheriffs, one of the military guys will escort the turkey to jail. Just that simple. That's the way the plan is set up, and I agree with it fully. Uh, I read about three quarters of it. At the time I saw it, it was about five inches thick. Um, standard legal pad type size, um, standard military binder. Um, when I saw it, I did. I asked the guy, I said, what is it you want me to do? He said, start reading. Well, I read for quite a few hours, and uh, quite frankly, I got tired of reading, but I kept reading anyway. I was drinking coffee like it was going out of style and thoroughly enjoying myself because the stuff that was in there is all about freedom. We need to return to our original documents. We need to make sure that the U.N. gets pushed off the friggin' uh, country shores into the water and see if it floats. Uh, a whole bunch of uh, anti-constitutionalists need to go. You don't like our country, go back where you came from. Real simple. Nothing complicated. And nothing uh, real obtuse. It's very simple. You're either here to formulate a new life and blend into what is here, or you're adverse to it. Very simple. It's nothing complicated. You want to be a, a, a raging um, radical of some sort, um, go around hurting innocent people and things like that, you need to stay home. And, in your, and if you're raised here and you want to act like that, we'll find a place for you to go. Right. I mean, this is when I say house cleaning, I'm not limiting that. This is going to have to be accommodation. Uh, you're starting from the top, and you're working down to a certain level. And then it's going to be up to the individuals that live in these areas, small towns, uh, counties, big cities. They're going to have to make decisions, and they're going to have to uh, make these decisions stick. They're also going to have to figure out how to restructure what we got to the point where none of this happens again. Just that simple. Is is there any effort to form common law juries to decide who the arrest warrant should be issued against? Um, not at this point. That is part of the. Uh, there's uh, four parts. Okay, the first mission was the freedom documents. That's been completed excepting there are a few states that uh, have not been completed yet. They will be accepted as territories. 
until such time as their paperwork is approved and returned. Second part, second mission, totally different from the first one, localization. This is where you go out in the community and you rally the troops. And you can do this on all kinds of different levels uh, in different ways. Somebody needs a ride. Somebody needs to learn how to grow a garden, whatever. Um, third part, okay? Uh, and the, and I, everybody likes to stick on every word I say, okay? Try uh, a process whereby you reinitiate, you regurgitate or restructure our government pro, governmental process with the guidance of, and we've got about, um, oh, right now it's running somewhere near 50, give or take, uh, constitutionalists. These are a combination of professors that teach constitutional law. These are a combination of people who are very familiar with the documents, a combination of people who are experts in common law fields, etc. These are the people that are going to come out with the things in terms of structure so they can't do this twice. Now the fourth part of it is, is to make sure that the people that we have in office are not only doing the job, uh, but actually doing a really decent job. Now, what you got to understand is two things. First, you don't need near the federal government that we got. So those people are going to have to unwind the part that they play or have played wherever it is, wherever they're at. Uh, the IRS is going to get shut down. I can tell you that right now. That is bogus. The central banking system, gone, Okay. Most of the legalistic gobbledygook that you've got are, uh, is going. This is horse hockey. Forget about the implied contract. Uh, forget about uh, no resistance you agree and all that happy stuff that, they, that you find out there. Uh, I'm seeing right now, America, the U.N. will take your guns away, and they got a YouTube link. Yeah, they can pry it from my cold dead fingers after I get about six or eight of them. And that's just how it is. I'm not going to, I ain't going quietly into the night. I'm not going to play their game. I've had enough. And I've been trying to do this for, oh, I've been working at this for 15 years better. Uh, I've been involved in it uh, for 30 some years. Uh, I was surprised that uh, it came back to me. I was requested uh, to do some of these shows simply because they knew that I would not divulge information that was too sensitive. I would not expose anybody, and I would give a pretty concise uh, idea as to what's going on. Now, you've been given things uh, that I've repeated. Now, I've repeated it on this show for two reasons. One is a lot of people haven't heard it, but the other part is this. If you really want to know what's going on, go to freedomreigns.us. That's freedomreigns, R-E-I-G-N-S, dot U-S. That website has uh, copies of our uh, recordings of shows I've done in terms of freedom, addressing the troops, expressing to the people what they should do, uh, such as, you know, lay up three, four weeks of groceries. It's a good idea. I guarantee you that people are not going to consider uh, things like toilet paper, which I consider pretty high up on necessities, as being a survival uh, element. You need food and water. You don't need toilet paper. You know, you want to bet? <laughs> I already got stocked up. I got some in my basement. I mean, the simple stuff, the things that you use every day you don't think about. So the idea of this is to foment uh, cohesion between a combination of the military as being the good guys, law enforcement actually being your friend, and you get to play a part in it. Everybody here gets to play a part in the rebirth of our nation. Uh, there ain't too many things more awesome, awesome than that. I mean, think about having your own tea party. Only we'll throw politicians in and see if the fish object. You know, I mean, fix something. <laughs> um, and there's a lot that needs to be done. Uh, the uh, thing about this is that this is not a singular uh, event limited to just our country. I'm playing the part in this country simply because I was requested to. The other part of it is is that I feel a, um, a patriotism that runs very deep. I took an oath of service, 
and I honor that oath, period. So that oath goes to the fact of the Constitution being defended against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. And one of the domestic enemies we've got are bankers, financiers, and as some industrialists, not all of every, any one of those, but a, a lot of them. And these people are going to get put through the ringer. They are going to be separated out, and they're going to be adjudicated mostly uh, according to what they did. Uh, you know, if if it was, if they tried to finance uh, uh, Saddam Hussein, that ain't cool. How about the how about the chemical company that sold the uh, uh, biological and nerve agents and uh, gases that were used in that short war? Uh, how about uh, instead of treating Palestinians as target practice, maybe the uh, uh, Hebrew community could uh, change its leadership so that they've got something over there that's realistic, um, that's humanitarian. You don't starve people out. You don't uh, go in and take their land. We did it to the Indians here, and it wasn't any right, any more right or correct that time than it is now. The Jews complain about uh, the Holocaust. Ooh. And then they turn around and do the same thing to somebody else? Give me a break. There's something wrong with that. And I will set it at the feet of the leaders. So, you know, uh, we need to. We need to. We're going to need to suck it up. We're going to need people such as yourself to watch these guys. Yeah, make sure it's right. Objective, it ain't. Uh, so, you know, uh, you have. If you have talents, uh, go to the Freedom Marines website and offer those talents. Uh, we have a system where we uh, connect people in their state to people who are in their state of like mind. I, I, I've tried that. Right. I, I, I'm not, I haven't been, outside of this forum right here, I haven't been able to get rapport with anybody in leadership. Uh, more specifically, our local U.S., or our local county sheriff is a criminal conspirator. He routinely railroads people off into jail with the courts only going through a, a pretense of due process of law. And many U.S. marshals around here locally are also um, um, complicit in s similar miscarriages of justice. Um, uh, so what do we do when the local U.S. Marshals and, and our local county sheriff is, is severely compromised? Um, that, that's why I'm emphasizing the local common law juries to, tr to try to move into the vacuum there and decide, to start deciding who should be arrested and who should not be arrested on a local basis. This is uh, all well and good, but you also have to have enforcement with that. Well, you, uh, either way, uh, we, we have to have enforcement, but um, uh, we need to ensure, most of all, that the right people get arrested and the wrong people don't get arrested. We don't need to just be breathing uh, 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 empowerment into corrupted local sheriffs or corrupted local U.S. Marshals here. I agree. I fully agree with that. Well, I, I don't know I'm way we're together. ensuring that outside of forming our own local common law juries. Okay, well, there is a combinational thing uh, that's going on. Uh, things are being put together as we speak. Uh, there's approximately 50 or 60 uh, people involved in this, uh, legalists, uh, et cetera, professors. The other part of it is is that the uh, there are a load, and I mean a large load, of veterans out there who would be more than happy to assist in terms of enforcement. They are already familiar with firearms, if need be. They already know uh, the legalistics involved because there is a thing called rules of engagement, and I would see that movie, by the way. It's very well done, um, that uh, they're familiar with. You don't engage civilians. Uh, you do not uh, usurp your authority. You do not violate your uh, oath of office, uh, et cetera. Well, now, we're, we're, we're not, not executing arrest warrants against many civilians, the well, criminal uh, civilians. What I'm saying is that it sounds like that uh, it sounds like to me that there are a load of people, and the, you're not the only one who's experiencing this. Uh, this is all over now. There's a load of people that are going to go. Uh, apparently, there are some federal marshals and some uh, sheriffs and uh, local law enforcement that uh, needs to experience their own jails. Right, uh, right, exactly. Okay, so what I'm suggesting is that uh, this is this would not be the first time 
um, where somebody has taken on a corrupt system. Uh, I first thing comes to mind in a corrupt system is walking tall with a big stick. Uh, <laughs> that sort of uh, attitude uh, may not be the most peaceful thing in the world, but in some cases, some people don't know the difference between hello and getting wrapped over the head with a two before, except that when you hit them with a two before, they pay attention. It's like that old mule my grandpa had. You had to hit it with a two before before it would act right. Well, some people are like that. Okay, so uh, these are people that need to be adjudicated. Now, uh, you can play the common law jury routine all you want. If you do not have active enforcement, you got a problem. Yeah, but if we got the you, you know your network with the the military and the U.S. marshals that are good and the sheriffs that are good backing up our local common law juries, then then we've got our enforcement game together. Exactly. So what you want to do is you want to get out into the community and get the localization going in a combination of ways. First of all, you take care of the community's needs or whatever little area you're in, and you foster this by you need a ride, you need an extra can of beans, whatever it takes, okay? In that effect, you create a personal relationship with these people. They then want to uh, share that same uh, good feeling of having done something cool for somebody with others, and it grows. You encourage people to think about that, okay? Then you start with, well, do you pay federal taxes? Yeah. Did you know that's fraudulent? It feels like it. Well, it really is, and we're trying to do something about it. Now, I don't know that if the military is going to take their action in the next couple of days. They very, very well could be setting everything up to do exactly that. I'm not sure of that yet. Um, I'm working on a communications uh, problem that we've had uh, that came up just recently. So as I get information, what I've been doing is I've been going on uh, – these uh, shows on Wolf Spirit Radio, that's where we do our uh, shows, and uh, the uh, website also contains information. It deals with this. Now, well, like I said, in the next couple of days, I'll be putting together a, uh, hopefully a nationwide uh, legal consortium that will be able to assist in terms of, you know, you may not know everything there is to know about something. These guys will know the difference. Uh, and be able to explain it or send you documents or whatever is needed. To go along with that, uh, my instruction to the underground, the armed groups, the militias, uh, and people of this nature, is to uh, offer your services. If you're ex-military, you have knowledge that is valuable. If it's only simply a tight, organized, military-type structure, that even goes a long way. So... There's a whole bunch of um, being able to deal with things, but you got to do it in a correct way. So uh, what you want to do is you want to find a, a veteran, uh, some veterans in your area who would not mind being uh, the law enforcement arm of your jury, okay? And so, you know, this is, like I say, we only started real actively working in this uh, around uh, um, October of last year, and it's come a long way. This has come become national, and it's growing to international. So uh, being the spokesperson, I got stuck with the fun of uh, getting on the radio and dealing with whoever asked whatever question uh, is not a problem. I'll answer all the questions to the extent that I can. I'll try to help in any way I can, but there's a lot of information on that website that people may need. It explains how to uh, put together uh, a localization process. Uh, it does not right now have a lot of legalistics yet. We're working on that. Uh, as I said, we only started last November. Uh, excuse me. Uh, actually, it started September and actually got active in October. Um and we're building, we're building and adding to the website and things of this nature. So um, everybody's going to have to be a little bit patient. Uh, I'm hoping that the armed forces takes their action uh, sooner than later. I would love to see all these turkeys be uh, subject to people such as yourself. Uh, these That one's dirty, that one's dirty, that one's dirty, and they just go and snatch them. 
Well, it, with a little bit of uh, um, endorsement from from your leadership group, such as it be, um, uh, we at the local level could start forming our own common law juries and and uh, issue verdicts about who needs to be let out of jail and who, who, what corrupted local public and ser- servants, including possibly local sheriffs, should be sent to jail. Exactly. Well, you go ahead and make your list. Well, I, uh, we, we, we need some sort of endorsement that that the the, the effort that you're working with will respect our, our our verdicts. If we got some kind of um, uh, endorsement from 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 the the good people in, in in leadership positions in 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 your network there, then then we can rock and roll because we've got some color of legitimacy from somebody with with a plan together to actually take the country back. Okay. Uh, here's how this is. The only endorsement you can get at this point is my word. Well, that's better than nothing, man. We're grasping the straws out here. Okay, well, what I'm trying to express is that until it's safe to do so, the uh, documentation on this stuff is going to be held very, very carefully, very safely, so that people don't die from it. Uh, It's not exactly yet time. Now it's getting close. I can tell you that. Uh, all the militias were put on direct alert. Now, what that means is they have been instructed or requested by me to do two things. One is to develop a phone tree for the civilians. The second thing is to also develop a phone tree within their own group to post a lookout, scout, whatever you want to call it, to keep an eye on local infrastructure. If you've got a cell tower, you need to watch it. You need to have somebody up there who can see the uh, power line uh, towers, and if you see somebody fooling around, a group of, a group of individuals packing stuff over to it, uh, you make the call. You call the sheriff if there's action and tell him to come on, and I hope you get here in time, but uh, these people don't look right. So you go down and you get close enough to see them real good, okay, and see what they're doing. If they're packing the explosives around the thing, then you're going to need some backup, but You'd be amazed what it does for an explosive person when you set off their explosives with a gunshot. It ruins their day. Uh, There's a whole bunch of different ways to slow things down until your backup gets there. I mean, this is just a simple scenario, and you're liable to see this. Uh, The bad guys want to cause as much chaos, frustration, and problems as possible. They are going to try to blow the infrastructure of this country. This includes power stations, cell phone towers, bridges, major intersective uh, portions of interstates and things of this nature. They're going to try to take them out in whatever way they can. And so what the good guys are trying to do is tactically maneuver in such a way that they can prevent as much as possible. Problem is, is that they're just like the police. They are limited in terms of the number of eyes. Everybody around where I live knows when some stranger's in the neighborhood, pretty simple, okay? If somebody's screwing around with something, and we know who the repairmen are up here, uh, (laughs) if it ain't one somebody we know, we're going to ask them about it. Hey, how's it going? Uh, You been working with it long now? When you see see a little uh, package that says B or C explosives, uh, I'm going to tell you right now that a telephone repairman don't have any use for that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Job. Okay, you make the phone call. All right, man, hey, thanks. Hey, if you need a cup of coffee, stop by. <coughs> okay, you know, and don't act like nothing's wrong. Just go back, call the sheriff, and tell him, hey, I'm getting my hunting rifle because there's a dude down here with explosives in his truck, and he's supposed to be a telephone repairman. You better get yourself out here because you can have bodies to deal with. First thing I'd do is shoot, shoot his tire out so he couldn't go anywhere. You know, I mean, there's, you know, figure some kind of stupid way. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's going to take an extraordinary effort to get this done. Um, you know, and I, I keep getting dominated on the phone calls uh, dealing with this. Um, we did have a nice conference call with Canada. Uh, so Canada is looking to us to help them with some of the process. And and I'm not saying me particularly. I assisted in some of it. Um, I've got some ideas. Uh, then other people that we have that are part of part of uh, this uh, conglomeration of different people all over the place, uh, they help handle some of the paperwork. Uh, other people have got connections with other people. 
and it goes from there. And this is the way you build a, a as such a network. Now, uh, doing the, the the study of the structure of your government um, is a good idea, no matter who you are. Uh, you need to know what it should look like, and if it don't look like that, then you know there's something wrong. Yeah, in terms of organic law, Canada's constitution is really the same as ours. You, you know, you get back to Magna Carta and stuff, that's what it's really all about. Well, there's some other things that, that, that deal in uh, Canada, deal with Canada that are not um, any part of the United States that I wasn't aware of. Um, and the, the, this, this is part of the paperwork that I didn't know about that came out on the call. I didn't know that there were such differentials, uh, and I didn't know that the uh, manner of uh, uh, bringing about freedom would be as different, excuse me, in Canada as it's going to be in comparison to the United States. Now, uh, that doesn't mean that the procedure is that much different. It's basically the same, and it's basically the same uh, throughout the world. But the difference is that... Uh, the uh, treaties and agreements and other things that have that have uh, gone on in Canada are considerably different, meaning that the base documents that they would have to use, uh, we have a constitution, okay? Canada's got a constitution. They don't say the same things. So there, there's that difference. Um, I mean, they're interrelated, but they're different. Uh, different countries are different than uh, any given country. So you get, I have, I, I'm going to try, I mean, I'll try to help them, but I'll try to help whoever. But the main thing is that we need to concentrate on this country. We need to make sure that these people that are uh, bad guys and idiots uh, don't get far enough down the road to get out of control where we cannot take it back. Right. Just that simple. Right. And uh, that's part of what I'm working towards. So, well, if, if if you do free up the states and you cut off the head of the snake, Britain, well, that will solve our problem here in Canada too. Well, the the thing about the head of the snake is that it's um, most of the directives are financial. When the um, over the years, the basis of the finance has shifted to the uh, central banking system here in the states from. A variety of sources where it used to be centered. Uh, therefore, it's critical that the central banking system here goes down. When it does, all of the central banking system worldwide goes down in terms of the G20. Uh, what that's going to do is that takes their capability to hire the thugs and pay the troops. Therefore, when they can't do that, ain't nobody going to take their orders. Just that simple. They're going to pick their stuff up and go home and have a sandwich. Um, and this is also basically true of uh, military troops. Uh, the uh, active duty troops that I've talked to have gone through their ranks, and everybody agrees. They do some some kind of silly something or another like uh, martial law or tell us that we're going to go drag Granny out of her house. That ain't happening. Uh, so, you know, when you got... Like I say, 80% was the last figure I got that was reasonably accurate, and it's grown since then. So you're looking at people not willing to follow illegal or unlawful orders. You've got a combination of them willing to back that up with their military training, including their weapons that they got in their hands. But that's going to make a difference. I'm, I'm, you know, And when, that, when local law enforcement sees the troops uh, cheering them on, when they drag some fat boy down the stairs or something, uh, you know, and the civilian's standing around, it's about time that crook went to jail. Whoopee. You know, that's the, the, then the celebration starts. Uh, until, until that's time, uh, we need to do as much organizing uh, in a combination of local and national as we can so that we've got some kind of, oh, like you say, a general uh, plan to follow, that sort of thing, uh, something that we know we can do. When the localization gets uh, going real good, then the third uh, part of the third part of this is going to be uh, started um, in a heavy way, and that's going to be the uh, formation of what it takes to make sure that these people can't do this again, primarily. And the fourth part is actually putting the government back together. Now, 
like I said, you're not going to have a federal government like you got now. You're going to have maybe, uh, I don't know, at most a tenth of it or less. Uh, most of the uh, governance is going to be taking place in the states, just as it was originally set up. Um, the common law, common law jury, the jury of peers, as it's stated, is going to be put into effect. If you don't have the right number of people, you cannot issue a, a warrant. If you do not have an affidavit of fact that uh, five people agree to, uh, then um, the warrant is questionable. If you do not have a, um, uh, an executable uh, warrant in terms of uh, search, seizure, and specifics, uh, then the warrant is invalid. Everybody knows these things, or should. If they don't, and somebody comes and presents you with an arrest warrant, well, let me see that. Okay, where's your affidavit? Oh, we didn't ever have one. Then this warrant, this warrant is not valid. Sorry. Yeah, go try again. <laughs> there, you know. Excuse me for interrupting here, Drake. We're almost running into four hours here, so maybe we should field another question and maybe okay. look at wrapping it up soon. That's fine. Whatever. Well, good with you, James. James must be muted, or else he, we've lost him. And no, I, I was I was just muted out here for a minute. I didn't want anybody to hear me typing and stuff. Uh, but no, whatever you like. I was going to say myself that you know a lot of people were coming on wanting to hear what you had to say uh, about you know the Mergellans and uh, bringing forward uh, some of those ideas. So hopefully you can still have enough time to. They'd give us about some of your protocols and all that stuff too. And I obviously I want to want to thank Drake so much for for coming on and calling, sharing what, as he has and what he has. And we appreciate all that you're doing. We're very hopeful that um, what you're bringing forward is factual and true. Um, I know there are many that are a um, little concerned that there's no sort of proof of what you're saying. Um, to, to, to a great extent, uh, as they would expect to find for something that's been going on for this many years. Um, but um, you know, it's a, it's, it's you know, obviously everybody likes to hear what you got to say. Okay. Well, well um, might, might I point out that uh, Cliff High uh, did a, a radio show shortly after your uh, well, the next day after your April first interview, and uh, he said that he didn't detect anything in it in his his uh, spy bot program and I would say to Cliff on that note that if this is all in the background and all secretive within the military it would not be out on the internet and in general conversation so naturally your spy bot would not pick up on any of this stuff Cliff it would Absolutely. only make sense Absolutely. That's true. so um, <clears throat> All we can do is ride with it, hope for the best. We really won't know until we see it happen in front of our eyes, and that's all that we have to ride with. Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Exactly. Well, it's and do, do our us, part. It seems to me all of us, you know, really um, look forward to this happening, you know, if and when it does. And uh, rest assured, I, I believe... Uh, <laughs> At least most of the people I know, they'll be right there at your side when when the time comes that we have to start taking a handle on things and um, dealing with it whatever way we have. It'd be a beautiful thing to see uh, people coming together and taking care of all this corruption and, and dealing with it. That just um, I, I want to reiterate something you brought forward in most of your other calls, not so much on this one as you have, but you know we want to avoid. Uh, any kind of confrontation as much as possible. When this when uh, this all starts coming down, if and when it does, um, there's always you know, going to be some you know disruptions and things. And you know, people there's there's still a lot of people that you know are not tuned in here and you know watching that old boob tube, so they haven't got a clue what's going on. And not everyone is going to get the message, and not everyone's going to be you know, comprehending what's going on. There's going to be confusion, and obviously confusion causes a lot of problems. So, you know, um, I would just say, as Drake said earlier, we all need to, you know, get out there with our neighbors and our friends and get the word around and, and let them know um, that, 
you know, the, these are things that are being worked on. That, you know, that might make a great change for us. Well, that's why I mentioned the website. It's got the, the information on localization and a bunch of other things on there, as well as uh, recordings of uh, other shows that have done. Um, I did, and to be honest, I didn't mean to steal the limelight here at all. Um, the Mogellan issue is uh, something that is, first of all, extraordinary. And so far, as I can tell, Brian has been the only person who has um, done the research necessary to correct the problem. So I would use him or look to him as a consummate expert in the field. And that's basically um, the way I feel yeah. about what he's done. Thank you, Drake. Um, I will stay on and answer some questions on Magellan's, and possibly we can do an entire show next week on it. Drake, I have one question about a Kettler. A Kettler who uh, suddenly has shot to fame echoing your stuff and claims to be involved with it. Do you know of him at all? Uh, You said Kettler? Yeah, I believe it's a John Kettler. K-E-T-T-L-E-R. Apparently he had a blog going and he was get, only getting a few hits. Somebody sent me a link to it and he skyrocketed all of a sudden uh, claiming to be involved uh, with all of this. Now, one of the things that caught my attention on it was he referred to Chavez as a psycho with nukes now and um, that is military propaganda to the best of my knowledge because as far as I know, Chavez has been really good to his people, the same as Gaddafi was to his people, and any kind of slander against leaders of another country like that that have uh, a military slant to it to, uh, to sway public opinion for an invasion um, I wouldn't want somebody like that on my side, so I was curious as to whether he had a direct involvement with you or if he's just trying to grab some of the limelight on this. Well, it could be that uh, I know the man. Um, it doesn't ring a bell right off the top, though. Um, the problem is, and I'll state this again, not everybody, uh, we, don't, we don't keep a database. There's no database for this. This was done individually by a small uh, collections of people in individual states. Uh, there are supposedly contact people in each state, um, and uh, due to that fact, we don't know who all is who. We do not know the people that are involved in the actual individual states' actions. Uh, we don't have a an organization, okay? It doesn't exist. And we don't have a leader. I'm a spokesperson at this point. Uh, I was requested to get information out, so that's primarily what I'm doing. Um, but as far as Kettler goes, uh, I'm not aware. I'll go to the site, to his site, and check it out and, my, and see whether or not I do know him. Um, right now, I'm running somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, three pages of emails uh, first thing in the morning, and uh, about nine to fifteen by the time of the end of the day. You add to that, um, on the average, uh, ten to a, ten to a dozen calls, and that's that's just on regular phone calls. And you add um, oh, anywhere from uh, two to five uh, international calls a day. And uh, I might miss somebody's name at one point or another. <laughs> it can happen. Okay. Uh, well, I thought I'd give you a heads up on that because we need to be aware of who is uh, trying to tap into this and sabotage it or anybody that's making claims or, or statements that are going to damage the image of what is really going on here. Well, the main thing to remember is this. There's one contact point for me and the efforts that have been made, and that is freedomrains.us. That's the only contact, that's the only valid website. Anybody who uses any other name or my name, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I would suggest they're probably bogus. That's what I would suspect. Um, I'm I'm curious, too, as to what... um, what the dark forces might be doing in the background um, once getting wind of all of this and what's going on here. 
Um, I, I don't put it above them to set off a huge nuke somewhere just to cause a major disruption in it all and basically dismantle your efforts all at the same time. So uh, hopefully you've got people inside who are watching the dark side and stopping them from doing anything that will um, put up a barrier for this actually to happen. Well, there are a lot of uh, people that have been placed a long time ago in sensitive positions um, that are considered critical in what they do in critical positions. Uh, these are a combination of moles, eyes and ears, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, the uh, a majority of the bad guys have been identified, and um, they're kept a pretty good, pretty close eye on the uh, main thing that uh, has been put together is a, a manner in which to uh, nullify.